up everybody hey, everybody 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 hey 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 guys we're back back episode 54 of the flat out fever formula one podcast, podcast. hey kid i'm a podcast <laughs> listen to me <laughs> <laughs> hey kid i'm a computer yeah <laughs> and we start actually no let's let's get a couple things out of the way before we get right into the nitty-gritty of the action number one thank you to everybody that showed up last weekend uh or that you know this this past sunday to the f1 at betty's event that was that was really cool man that was a lot of fun packed house packed house did not expect that honestly like people like we had to turn people away (laughs) it's like listen they might schedule extra staff for next weekend yeah (laughs) with china hopefully jeez that was is that gonna be live no 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 no, yeah china won't be china we won't uh, play live but but also won't be at 11 in the morning so many people showed up 10 30 yeah wow that was was amazing yeah it was sweet it was good, good, good showing. Honestly, if, if anybody's listening from uh, from uh, the people that showed up, uh, thank you, thank you for coming. We had a great time. Everybody should come. Honestly, the the more the better. The more people that show up, the the the, the more things they're gonna have for us, and the more that we will be able to do with them. Sorry about the commercials. Yeah, to get the well, Sky yeah, business well, sorted for next time. Absolutely. TSN five, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> um, second thing. Contest. Contest. Let's talk yes. about the contest uh, because it's still happening, it's still going on, yep. and we want you guys to be part of it. Everybody and and, and to uh, and thanks. Us. Well, thanks to everybody that have submitted your your entries. Yeah, we received them. Good. We've acknowledged good. all of them and um, keep sending them. Honestly, just the, the open to everyone on earth. Everybody, yeah, You're welcome to. Enter. Oh, I was gonna say this. Even like we have a lot of international listeners as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah, don't don't be guys, scared. Guys, if you know people in Toronto. Just apply for this contest and give it to them, right? <laughs> or, brilliant. Or Montreal. Oh, Montreal. Yeah, yeah. it Montreal. doesn't matter. Anywhere in between. Yeah, somewhere in Canada or the East Side or too. Northern United States. That's absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, for the people that haven't uh, have been following this, what is our contest? Mike? Okay, so our contest is uh, for what? For what? Okay, so good question. Two tickets, two general admission tickets to the Montreal Grand Prix. Canadian Grand Prix. I keep on messing that yeah. up. It's in Montreal. In Montreal. It's, in Montreal. <laughs> it's in Montreal. I'm going to call it the Montreal Grand Prix. For the full weekend, <laughs> GA. GA. Mm-hmm. That's a bunch of days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, For two people. All five sessions. Mm-hmm. All of them. Yeah. And testing, right? Well, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, it's, it's, it's all going to happen. So there's two tickets up for grabs. All you got to do to win him is what? You pointed at Danny. Oh, yeah. well, I thought he was pointing at you. Sort of pointing <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> so all you guys, what do you guys? All you guys have to do is yeah. create a piece of art, media, uh, something of that nature. Tell uh, us a story. Tell us a story. You can call us in if you want to. Yeah. We love those. It's a creative wink, contest. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, um, creative contest uh, about the Canadian Grand Prix or yeah. Montreal or the racers of that race. Anything related to the Canadian Grand Prix, you can make it as general as possible, as as as, as broad as possible, yep. or as narrow as possible. Yep. If you want to send us uh, a collage of pictures, like some of you have done, uh, that's 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 more than welcome. Uh, send us a song, send us a video, send us a, a original pieces of art, send us a story. If you and if you just couldn't be bothered with any of that, um, <laughs> you know, call us in and tell us why you should win them. Pretty, yeah. pretty straightforward. That's pretty much it. Make uh, sure you, that you've clicked subscribe on YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's it. The only prerequisites, and also that's the only um, We we will be judging the contest. Uh, entries are open till the end of this month, end of April. Uh, so we have um, so obviously the two tickets for first place. Uh, second place is a FOF T-shirt, uh, a bamboo T-shirt, and CD. And then the third place prize is just a. FOF t-shirt t-shirt of your size yes it's not just gonna be some random <laughs> size no of course yeah we'll get your details first yeah all right now all right, we'll that's get, it we'll that's get to it. the show pull up that picture of uh lewis of arabia there no. <laughs> he, he made an appearance looking like this man so uh, it suits him <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie look i've seen white people in that kind of shit and they just don't they just yeah, don't deal no, with that's, it that's true that's true they look ridiculous <laughs> The, yeah, the, I only just saw this picture this morning. What we saw on the weekend was him, like, could have been anywhere. 
Mm-hmm. Well, no, he was right up, right up in the garage. Oh yeah, he went up, up into his team's garage wearing that and and looking very pensive. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's thinking about something hard. Do you think he knew he was going to have such a bad start? Oh, well, well <laughs> looking like this, obviously not. <laughs> it would have come a little bit more under dress. The, the thing is, okay, so this is apparently uh, I forget what what this is called. I read about it, but um, it is what the uh like nobility and like high class people wear there uh, like that's what i was is, thinking looking yeah. at it what we said on the weekend is yeah. that thing was probably not cheap no it's whatever it's called and he it's, still has like, like, like the equivalent of wearing like a suit like a, a tailored suit I, I right. Guess, right i bet right. it breathes i bet that's like yeah that's thing. the whole idea yeah. reflect oh, the sun and get some wind between your legs uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lewis looking yeah. very dapper, and he's, he's obviously he obviously always wants to grab the he's always going for those tabloid headlines. So there oh, he yeah. is again, once again, <laughs> and showed up with like a, um, a a big medallion of Jesus. Jesus's face. <laughs> Although, okay, Isn't people it kind of weird and ironic, right? Pe- pe- people have been saying have been giving him a, a lot of flame um, for showing up with a Jesus thing, um, but yeah, but why not? G- yeah, Jesus is actually not like it. It, it he he occupies a place in, in in islam like he's oh really he is actually considered one of the prophets or something like that correct me whoever's a muslim out there and is listening but he is not like it's not like believing in jesus is going to get you in trouble as a muslim right okay like, and at the same time you don't have to be a muslim to wear that true same as you don't have to be any other religion to wear a that suit makes a lot of sense or a in my ignorance is showing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's like whatever you don't have to wear like a t-shirt or a sweater which is just another kind of clothes yeah yeah absolutely kudos to him though that's got to be a chore to keep clean oh my god <laughs> i wouldn't be able to i don't have any white shirts anymore no, i refuse no, i know I, I got you guys some white shirts last week but yeah i don't buy white <laughs> shirts because they're impossible <laughs> to not stain them <laughs> i'm sure all my other shirts have stains you just, you just yeah. can't see them as much <laughs> <laughs> But he showed up to Bahrain clearly thinking that he was going to be able to do something, something good, you know, yeah. and re- redeem himself from uh, um, uh, from what happened in Australia. That poor start. He mm-hmm. he we we saw him practicing his starts, um, and what w- what went and happened again? Again, he, he was he he didn't have the best of starts. Now what was, what is this? Why why is this happening? Because we know Mercedes is a powerful car. Very, the, the most the most powerful mm. if if not yeah. uh but what what's going on here Spe- like australia was a big surprise well not surprising because it's ferraris that took him over in the very beginning but when it comes to the mercedes trying to get that started nico made a point of mentioning over and over and over that he's practicing his starts really hard he had a lot of good ones all weekend the thing if you remember though from the the formation lap the first warm-up lap nico accidentally dropped or not dropped he went out shifted up into second when he launched this car and he almost stalled it so he got i think what toto said after was more accurate it's a lot of luck really right. like it's it's luck and obviously there's skill involved but the mercedes has contacted daimler the parent company mm-hmm. and they're working on some sort of engineered solution wolf's quote was that it's not anything to do with the software the controls it's a hardware problem that they need to fix yeah uh, if, if you count as far as mercedes the hardware <laughs> I don't know. They're working on something new. So I don't know. I guess Absolutely Mercedes. Really interesting. I guess they're hoping for China to come back with a new clutch. Well, this yeah. is what what happened before is that there's no tokens for clutch, though, right? Uh, no, because that's not part of the engine. Yeah, yeah. That, what had happened la- uh, last year, or up until last year, for for quite a while, is that they operated on these two uh, two clutch system that basically had the gears all ready for you, and you just like you had like. You know when you were when when you saw the lights drop uh, and turn off, you can just you just drop the clutch and the car and the the gearbox did the rest and your car just went. Now it, there's a lot more about what the driver can do and like there's more finesse. Like they can't just like drop it; they, they have to like kind of feel for it and like when the good. Right. From, from last right. year, they had a, a two paddled clutch, so it was you let out the clutch in two stages as you launch the car into first oh, and second wow. yeah so this year the the rule was changed at the last minute to single paddle clutch only mm. oh shit so there's less less room there half as much room right. to, to feel that do you think it's yeah. maybe just a reaction time when lights when lights out oh yeah that's, that's what I, was, well, I mean like, part yeah, of that's it. that's it right yeah, yeah huge part of it for sure 
a part of it, of course, like there's it's a sport, and you know, whenever whenever humans are involved in like when, with such complicity as the, uh, these yeah. cars, there is like Toto, Toto Wolf said, an element of chance, an element of luck. Right, uh, there always is in motorsports. Absolutely, but come on, the, like. Twice in a row, the Ferrari have had a great start. There's more than luck involved. I mean, in there. obviously, yeah. minus Patel. And it was well, she, yeah, right. We'll she, get that. That's right, yeah. But yeah, crazy, yeah, crazy race. There was even stuff happening before the before the the first lap. That made me really upset, actually. Like it's Vettel's engine. Yeah, the like second just, engine of the year that blew up. Oh, oh right, because Raikkonen. Yeah, yeah, it's actually caught on fire. Big, big oh, fireball. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ferrari said Vettel's will be replaced. They denied that it was a problem with the turbo. They had it's like seven or eight engine failures in preseason testing as well, Ferrari. So they had you, their, their car stopped. They caused a bunch of red flags do you, in do testing. You, do you want to know what it was about? Like what what happened there with that engine? Apparently, the inject something with injectors. Yeah, the injectors. But for something really really interesting that they've been that they've been working to introduce this year, but Mercedes already has, and. Like some uh, some attribute like their power gain so much to it, and it's basically the last thing that they had to work out for the with the internal combustion engine. It is ICU is it it is an ICU thing, and it's what's called HCCI. Or, or, or read about this is there's tons of videos on YouTube on this that really is gonna, are going to explain it a lot better than I <laughs> that I could muster, but. Um, HCCI is basically kind of like a co it, it, it combines theories of both uh, like you, you're basically building an engine that mixes elements of both traditional internal combustion like normal gas engines and diesel engines oh wow right because you know how, so the deal with the diesel engine is that you you put in your mixture of um, the, the the diesel gas, the diesel and air, yep. and you compress it. That's what it is, the diesel yep. engine does, so that there's no need for a spark plug. Mm -hmm. And when it's like compressed, like it it reaches a point where things get really hot, and then it just automatically explodes. And that's what that's what basically makes it. A lot of diesel engines they use something called a glow plug. So it's sort of like a heating element instead of instead of having a, a time spark coming off of uh, right into a, through a spark plug. They have a, a heater element. The gas just reaches its mm -hmm. critical pressure and heat. It just explodes by itself. Yeah. Without without needing to be sparked. Exactly. Hundreds of times a second. Now, um, diesel, of course, has has its great advantages, but it's got a lot of limitations and, and like it, you can't reach like that that same amount of top power. That is, it's got to happen um, with like the, just the regular gas engines. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is that. If you really, really, really wanted to like make everything, like to extract as much power from uh, from the, from the mixture of gas and air as possible, like as as, as much as you can, you should try to do something similar than what the diesel engines do with diesel, but with normal right. gas. Right. And okay. that is that is basically what this is. Now this is very, very, very difficult to do in a controlled way. It's it's mm -hmm. it. You can make that happen. In a lab, and like there's, but the last research basically right now, like Nissan had been working on an engine like this, Mazdas were now right now working on an engine like this that basically takes normal gas and gets rid of spark plugs, and just by controlling everything that much more and making like a very very precise engine, will allow for that for 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 normal gas to like basically self ignite under pressure. Right. So anyone that wants to really look, yeah. uh, Koenigsegg. They have a really good video on YouTube that they've also been. They have a few patents. Mm. They're, they've been working on this type of engine as well for a, a couple of years. For for anyone that doesn't know, to octane, mm. a lot of people think when you buy premium gas that you're getting like some better gas or you're gonna get more horsepower or something like that. Mm -hmm. The octane is just a, an index. So if you have octane itself, which mm. is like below. Propane, you know, there's like propane, butane, octane. It just it's a, it's it's a, it's a longer chain of of carbon atoms. That's what yeah, it is. Eight of them. Yeah. Octo. Yeah. Right. So you got, so they just use octane as an index. Mm. So if octane, it's kind of like temperature, like zero is frozen. Yeah. Octane 100, 100 is octane mm -hmm. on the scale. So if you have like a hundred eight octane gas, that would be like. 108 percent of the compressibility of octane mm -hmm. before you get that that what's called detonation if you're right. if your gas does that before the spark does 
and then lower octane like you'd get like 92 or something or 87 what you put in your normal car <laughs> your normal car your honda civic or your toyota corolla it's not compressing the car like a f1 engine is to oh. thousand like seven eight thousand psi like the your car might get reach a few hundred yeah. at the most well, and, and, and that's another thing. That's that's one of the things that makes like research into this so difficult uh, into into this particular is that if like car engines are already like like really, really under pressure to make it do this, to make it like self ignite, it means that you need even more pressure. So like the higher pressure and and, right. and managing at that environment under like such, such, such extreme conditions, that's what's, I guess, it's causing problems uh for, for ferrari and, and one final thing so when you when you have those three types of gas the reason that if you go buy yourself a porsche or some type of turbocharged vehicle the turbo like these f1 cars are is basically putting more pressure yeah, into, your, into more. your piston <laughs> that's what a turbocharger does it yeah. okay pushes the air into your engine compresses your piston to get more pressure for a bigger explosion, Got it. every explosion, which gives you more horsepower. And you need a higher octane gas in those type of cars because the pressure is higher. It's mm. built to that spec. Mm -hmm. So who knows what, th they never released the numbers, but what the octane levels are for these type of cars is <laughs> yeah. got to be very high. Or Yeah, th th and that's why it's important that like, it's each engine... They have a fuel partner, and they work very closely to make sure that the fuel that the fuel that goes into that car matches the demand of the engine. One hundred percent, like it, that, that, that's why they're tied. That's why um, each team, like if if you notice, like their sponsorship for gas of each team matches like the engine. So if all the okay. Ferrari cars have Shell gas. All the Renault cars have Total gas. All the Mercedes guys, oh. all, the, all the Mercedes cars have oh, Petronas, shit, Petronas gas. gas. Yeah. And uh, there's so many races. But I think it was at Italy last year <clears throat> was when Mercedes came out and announced that last year alone that they had gained around 50 horsepower just from fuel technology alone, from improving their gasoline and lubricants in the engine that's and and their cooling, and it's cooling fluids it's because they needed to go Which, with this thing that's what they that they said that but what they really mean is like we really yeah, cracked it comes out now. this yeah this hcci thing and i guess that's what ferrari's been working on and they said oh we did the same thing we got like another 40 some 50 horsepower from our sh shell gas that's it exactly but it's a, some kind but of super mercedes have been doing it since last year this is the first year that, that ferrari have tried it and they're they're getting some teething problems. I but at the same time, this is one of those problems that once they crack it, yeah, it's gonna be like that's gonna be done and they can go racing and sell it in road cars. Where, oh yeah, oh, F, F, oh yeah. This is yeah for road car technology. This is a huge another leap for because it, it's way more efficient. Yeah, you don't have to build the plugs. You don't have to. There's <laughs> a save a lot of uh, yeah. Now, do the other so teams many are they trying to? The other engine manufacturers, like yeah. th this is just something, yeah. one of those things that you can do to extract more power out of the whole right. power okay. unit. So and even outside of F1, like you're saying, for road cars, again, you're not going to, because it's so expensive, build a road car that's compressing seven, 8,000 PSI, or at least not, like, not I think yet. it was like something like 300 bar, had something like that I read, yeah. and that's like, that's a lot. <laughs> One bar is atmospheric pressure, something yeah. about 14.7 yeah. PSI. So fourteen point seven times three hundred by. But yeah, the, the, the scale is different. Whatever, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's crazy. It's a lot. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's awesome. <coughs> um, but yeah, that so that that's a Ferrari problem. Okay. So it's it is not turbo related, uh, which because which is good for them, and it's not, or it may not be necessarily one hundred percent related with the way that they've shifted things around in the power unit, uh, for this year, but. It is encouraging for Ferrari fans in a way that, like, in, in the sense that once they get that sorted out, we hope they're, they're, they're finally going to be able. And we've seen it. We, we've seen it that one, when this Ferrari engine doesn't break down, <laughs> doesn't yeah. go in a, in a, in a pile of, of smoke or, or fire, the Ferrari is very competitive. Like, even with a drive, like, we've been saying for, for the longest time, and, and most F1 uh, commentators agree, that Kimi Raikkonen is not the Kimi Raikkonen of the, of the past. Kimi Raikkonen, is, whereas he's still a very good driver, mm -hmm. he maybe doesn't have it anymore. Like, we've, we, we haven't seen him. Like, he had, most recently, since he came back from rallying, 
Uh, he had those two years with Lotus when he was like when he won races and whatever. But after that, it kind of declined, yeah. right? So if the guy that is just good enough for his Ferrari seat managed to place it in second, like who knows what Vettel would have been able to do? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess this is, it's kind of like I said in from Australia. You know, it rained at first. We didn't see the new tires right away, right. and then there were all the incidents that happened in in australia all the incidents that happened this race it's sort of like a slow unveiling of the year there's it's it's cool there's a lot a lot of stuff that hasn't been shown at all yet mm -hmm. wow, because of be, what's that no yeah, i'm saying yeah 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 i haven't really seen fully what vatal can do they messed up their strategy in australia yeah uh gutierrez is grosjean just killing it or is it like the haas really that good we haven't got to see what the second Haas car can really do, where they can, you know. Yeah, no, with the, it, both, and that is obviously one of the biggest stories from the race. Yeah, a lot Gosh, of a driver of the weekend, a, driver a, of the of the, of of the week. driver of the driver day. of the race, the driver, driver of the day. Yeah, T D O D T for the twice in a row. Yeah, he did it. He, I voted for him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I voted Grosjean. I I gave I I piled my vote upon the thousands of votes that must have come in for, for Rio Alonso. Harianto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I voted for Rio Harianto. Oh, I'm nice. just gonna vote. I'm just gonna vote Rio every time. Like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's so tempting. <laughs> I think Grosjean probably got millions of votes. <laughs> That's probably I why so. they don't publish the amount of voters because if they it, the votes that actually come in, because if they did, they'd find like a huge skew up for for Rio Harianto. But he might not be. The one that comes in as complete winner, but like maybe yeah. number two, number three, just from the amount of people that are voting, <laughs> Rio Harianto. How could you expect that not to happen if you're gonna put it on the internet? Like that's <laughs> it's like Bodie McBoatface. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you read about that? No. I know we talked about that when you were in Jamaica, but uh, <laughs> so uh, I was riding around on some Bodie McBoats. Yeah. <laughs> no. Catamarans and cruise ships. The British, um, I don't know. So something. Some. So this happened in in. In Great Britain, where they um, put their their um, Arctic exploration boat on the internet, and like people were like, "Yo, like name na name the boat." Everybody choose oh. a name, and the name that won uh, that had the mo the most votes was Bodie McBoatface. This is a, a, a government <laughs> yeah. Arctic exploration, but then so that they stuck with it. No, obviously what? not. Well, you be, see that, that's the thing, that, and that's the danger of putting something like that just straight out on the internet instead of. It's not a F1 danger. That's a cool name. No, that's but but if so if dumb. F one wanted to be like old, actual old people, use the new technologies to actually gauge like what people's reaction had been about the race and like mm. who like who really was generating the most the most hype, they just like it, it's as easy as go on the social media, go go into Twitter, go into Facebook and follow Snapchat. like like who's who's trending, who's trending the most, and yeah. you would have found very easily that Roman Grosjean is the one that's trending the most right now. No need yeah. to open it to a vote. Mm -hmm. Just like you could just <clears throat> pro, like you can probe getting up there like with that. Hamilton levels of social media power. Yeah, but if you want, yeah, if you want to just put it out for an open vote to anybody on the internet, you gotta, you gotta mind the trolls. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Something interesting about uh, Hamilton's Snapchat ban. Uh, kudos to him for continuing to post videos from the from the paddock. <laughs> but maybe they're pissed off because he's getting close to as much interest as F1 itself in his own self. <laughs> he's oh, yeah. Like he's more popular than F1. Than F1. <laughs> ha yeah, hashtag in. He's trending harder, <laughs> harder than the race. That's because F Formula 1 doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. In terms of social media and how they well, use the internet. Grosjean knows what he's doing. And, and Van Dorn. Yo. Oh, my God. Oh, That's another say, story. Say, before we move on quickly. Remember last episode when we talked about Haas? We're like, yeah, this is a one-off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is definitely uh, a one-off. Uh, pass me those words I say so I'm going to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> salt, pepper. Yeah. Mm. Egg on taste. salt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, okay, I'll, I'll, it, I mean, uh, as Kimi Raikkonen would say, bah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, we, 
Nobody was expecting this. No. And, 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 and nobody, meaning nobody, nobody was expecting <laughs> them to, call, uh, to come to F1 and be as, as good as they are. Yeah. As, as they have been, as they have shown to be. They actually, you know what, say what you want about Australia, but Bahrain was the definite. They have, yeah. they have something going on. They, they, it's, it's, it's no mistake. It wasn't, it, you can't, it wasn't an accident now for a second time in a row. Did yeah. you see Grosjean pull, pull Gros- some of those moves? Well, no, you got a couple, yeah. one or two passes, even with no DRS, just yeah. in his own in his own driving. Well, as we know, two points make a line, right? Yeah. And if that line goes this way, then yeah. you know no. they're in a good spot. Grosjean is, and I'm sure a lot is going to be written about him being at the top of his career yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, this is but- the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> He's I, feeling it. I think Grosjean. What what we find in Grosjean right now is a driver that has. Has <laughs> surpassed all his fears that he had before his his erratic behavior. He was yeah. like well on course to be another Maldonado, but he curbed that. He managed to he managed to get on top of that, and now he's maybe a mature driver, yeah. a, a more mature driver. If we can say that. And obviously, part of the success of the Haas team is due down to him. But the car cannot be discounted. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, um. Andrew Phil- Dr. Andrew Phillips from F1 Metrics, um, you know, our guest from last week, we, he actually posted something on Reddit pretty cool um, where he analyzed, like, step by step, like, basically what, what made Haas, like, good this time around, or, or Grosjean good uh, in Bahrain as well. Mm-hmm. And according to what he's analyzed, it just seems to be their management of the super soft. They found the sweet spot to extract as much as much potential as much pace out of the super soft tires and that oh. got him instead of doing because a lot of teams uh, strategy was going to be go on with super soft at, f- at first and then throw in the mediums or right or or, 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 or or the soft or something yeah right later on to just 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 throw it uh, whereas they actually went for something that maybe not a lot of strategists would have picked which was super soft super, super soft super soft <laughs> yeah. Um. And 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 made it stick, and 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 Grosjean made it work, and it, he wouldn't have been able to do that if he number one wasn't a good driver for mm-hmm. sure. Because you have to drive like, um, according to his his preseason form guide, he uh, Andrew Phillips of F1 Metrics. Remember when we were talking about it, we said that basically by to extract the maximum power out of uh, or the maximum performance out of the tires, it's as if you had to like drive. Drive, drive it like, drive slower and slower and slower, but just a little bit. So, yeah, every, yeah. Every, so he's he's got to be good at doing that. Right. But his car also has to allow him, right, to get on top of the tires in that manner. So mm. the the Haas is doing a, an ex- exceptional job at knowing what they've got. If that if that makes sense. Yeah. At at knowing the capabilities of their car and maybe. In other circuits where you have to have to have to use the medium tires or or a lot of the harder compounds, it won't work the same way. Mm-hmm. But I, now we know that as long as they got uh, super softs, the Haas are gonna be like a legitimate contenders for the midfield. Just I think I guess we'll get more into this uh, next week China China pre show, but yeah. just uh, the Pirelli tire selections for China have been released. Grosjean is one of two, pull, two drivers. Actually, because I, I, I found that pretty interesting. Ma- uh, Grosjean yeah. and Massa are the only two drivers with one medium and seven super soft sets. Six cars have seven super softs, but a lot of cars have four super softs. So as yeah. you said, the Haases, both of them have chosen seven super softs. Gutierrez, two, and Grosjean, one medium tire. Yeah. Look, we have teams that are so, going like really, really low on the mediums. Like, like Massa is going like Bottas and Massa team yeah. split. Ooh, wow. The Hamilton Rosberg team split. Yeah, most of the teams bo- have both drivers on the same set. Yeah, but, f- Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari's doing that. Yeah, Ferrari. But Jesus, like, yeah. so uh, are we expecting him? Okay. In terms of tire location, is going to be basically the same. Uh, well, the same three compounds. Mm-hmm. Um. For China, for for all the first three races, basically, right? But yeah. it's just it, then it just comes to how many of each does each driver want, or the, does each team think that they they're gonna need? We, Chi- we China's we, got a lot of long hard corners, though. Yeah. I think uh, the guys with the super softs they might be more in trouble. I don't know. But look, so that's that means the Williams here 
that they went for yeah, as get- many super softs as they could get. Yeah, basically. Yeah, uh, and so did uh, who's down here? Uh, the McLarens. The McLarens yeah. and and Haas. That's it. Yeah, but like Grosjean and Mas, well, Williams, Mercedes, and Haas are the only three teams with with driver um, strategy splits, and Grosjean and Massa is the only two that have only one set of mediums. Yeah. So they might use that for the race or not. Are they going to go for a lot of stops yeah. and just push the car? China's going to be uh, different, though. I mean, I guess yeah. in, in terms of the weather. Yeah, uh, it should be a lot cooler. A, l- a little bit more smog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's a little gray there. Um, but, yeah. What a yeah, star, Haas, though. Haas killed it. What a sm- Haas killed it. Grosjean killed it. Gutierrez hasn't got a chance to show what he can do yet. Did you, did you see? Oh, let me sh- let me show you this picture here. Van, du- Van Dorn killed it. With Alonso had to watch him do it in his car. Oh, Beat Button man. Button came out after the race and said, oh, but- "Oh, if I would have <laughs> finished, I would have came I in fifth. Yeah, I would have gone fifth. Data yeah. shows fifth. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Shut up. Van Dorn got points. You didn't. Yeah, uh, their first points. Yeah, first points for, of the year for a long time, actually. Yeah, for sure. There's some eyes on that guy. Oh, 100. Yeah. He killed it. If you look at his past couple of years of racing, every series he's been in, like as we said on the, we were talking on the weekend, he's won or came in second place. Verline did a good job. Van Dorn did a good job. Gutierrez did a good job. All of those three drivers uh, in unofficial polls mm-hmm. got driver of the day or driver of the race. Like yeah, in, they in both, the F1 they all s- destroyed their teammates oh, on the F1 Fanatic website, for example. Then yeah, it was it was Verline, uh, Van Dorn, and. And and uh, and Grosjean, Grosjean, all credit to him. I, I I still think that he did a great job. But to me, the driver of the race, if I were to vote actually with what I think, was was Van Dorn, one hundred percent. I think I think that the way that he did that in that car, like just his, his results, like should be measured not only like by the, the huge achievement that that they were that he got the first points and whatever. Yeah. But he did it not in his car. That was Alonso's yeah. car with a, with who knows probably Alonso's seat. When you look Alonso's at that. Alonso's like driver configurations on the he had to learn and memorize that the all that all on plan. the way on the way down from Japan. So he this is a like, this kid they woke up, him up overnight. Yeah, this yeah, kid really. this kid woke up Last Wednesday. Minute. Yeah, on Wednesday morning, he woke up in Japan, you know, putting his overalls, not having a care in his world. Yeah. He had not he had an idea that he was going to test this car that he may or may not, or maybe was going to be racing later in the year for Formula, for the Japanese Super Formula. He gets a call in the middle of the night saying, get on a plane right now. You're coming to Bahrain. You're going you're gonna to be driving Fernando Alonso's car because he can't drive. And by the way, check your email. We just sent you a bunch of PDFs so you could, that you have to like study and memorize because you gotta, you got to learn how <laughs> to work this the car. the steering wheel now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And like, it's not just the steering wheel. It's like the, the, all the procedures and this and that that he mm-hmm. had to do. Yeah. So he was like doing that, like reading on the plane. He was there when – and then – Friday, uh, Friday practice. He did, he had like a couple moments, but not really. Then um, Saturday, out qualified button. Wow, out qualified button. And and Sunday he went and scored some points for sure. Yeah, it's, it would be stupid to think that he doesn't have the eyes of the big teams on him right mm-hmm. now, because yeah, it's not it's sure. not that just that he got the points. He got the points like starting from zero on Wednesday. Yeah, one of. <laughs> Also, I don't know the the numbers off the top of my head, but one of few drivers ever on their debuts to to score points to yeah. one of a elite few, I guess, or select few that have managed to score points in their first race ever. You know, okay, you know why why else he excites crazy. me a lot is because Carlos Sainz is a good driver. Max Verstappen has uh, he's, he's he's the new phenomenon. Um, uh, Jolly and Palmer, great, like good drivers with a lot with a lot of promise, but um, they're kind of in a way. I mean, I'm not saying that that their effort doesn't count as much, but in a way, they're kind of helped throughout their careers by the fact that their parents were involved in motorsport in one way or another. Mm. They had the contacts, they had they they knew the ropes, they have been there. What about Hamilton though? But th- that yeah, I I I think that if you if you look at F1 the way it is, or like how it is right now. Yeah. The stars of the sport, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, 
did not come to the sport from either. self-made guys. Yeah, they're yes, self-made they guys. They came from pure, pure love of driving go karts and, and as and, babies. And that shows. And Van Doren, like, may be part of that part of that crew. And I'm mm. not saying that that Max Verstappen isn't eventually gonna be just as great as Vettel or Alonso, but the fact that Verstappen came from out of nowhere. You're saying Rosberg won't be as as great as, great as, <laughs> <laughs> as much as he wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He saved the baby though from drowning. He didn't want to talk about it. Rosberg, exactly. (laughs) You didn't hear about this? Yeah, he saved the baby that was drowning, something like that. Monaco, super Rosberg to the rescue. (laughs) Uh, While we're talking about young drivers, Lance Stroll. Hey, yeah. Just for the the Canadians, quickly. Driving this year, uh, Formula 3, European Formula 3. This is F1 related. He is the, uh, well, he's a Williams reserve driver, test driver. Yeah, that's what he is. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So he 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 had a long-standing relationship with Ferrari because his dad owns a dealership and he's a long he, whatever he's a, he's a billionaire. His that's dad's a, nice and rich. A good a good customer of Ferrari. Yeah, and he was in the Ferrari Driver Academy. But something happened. The the relationship broke somehow, uh, and starting this year, he kind of signed with Williams mm. to be the like. I guess because Ferrari, he, he got impatient. Ferrari wouldn't notice him enough. Yeah. So he went to Williams and gave him a testing role, and he. So that's what he's doing this year, as long uh, as well as competing in the European Formula Three, which on the opening round there at Circuit Paul Ricard on the in France, he won the first race. Hey. Yeah, he did. yeah. Second race, I think he came like tenth or something, and the last race he placed fifth so the, he's now second in the championship yeah wow. he, he landed the points every single round quick numbers he's got two fastest laps two fastest race laps this weekend five podiums and racing for prima power prima power team if you want yeah. to check it out yeah, per- it's first race of the year but he's shown what he can do yeah uh, the Go cool canada th- the cool thing about formula three if anybody wants to a. check it out the, the the races are all made available uh, on YouTube, and it's actually I was I was following the championship here and there last year, and it can be quite exciting as just something to throw in the background if you got nothing else going on. <laughs> throw in yeah, throw in a, a yeah, Formula Three race. They, they do three short races. Yeah, it's a like, lot of a lot of sprint action. Yeah, a lot of sprint action all throughout. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, good for him. Can't go Canada. Yeah, he could be like the next serious Canadian Formula One driver, and I'm I'm excited to see. I that. hope so. I hope yeah. to see him doing something he's got the money for it for sure <laughs> seems like he has the talent too <laughs> yeah that Wait, he's 17 now 18 17 something like that so yeah okay. he can't be so. he can't quite be in f1 yet stupid max <laughs> ruining <laughs> ruining it for canada <laughs> max you ruined it for canada but whatever like the stroke could come to to f1 in 2018 or 2017 2018 which could be better year better years even to start your f1 career two interesting quotes from this weekend from mercedes yeah uh they said from their analysis that Toro Rosso has the weakest engine of the whole field. So kudos to Max. He is the king of all drivers, I guess. And uh, as well, they said from their analysis, they said that they believe Ferrari, mm-hmm. during qualifying, unveiled or unleashed a new engine mode that gave them 0.45 seconds a lap over their other times. That was a special quality button. <laughs> yeah, but without they failed to mention how they pulled out half a second in Q3, which they did <laughs> out of their ass. They hadn't shown that. Lewis Hamilton got the fastest lap of all time, right? Of yeah. of, of since the, the yeah of since even even the V10s or, or all everything. the way back to V10 since <clears throat> since Sakir was built on a colder track. On a colder track. Night. Yeah, it was at nighttime. Like, say say what you want. I mean, yeah, that's that kind of stuff is always difficult to compare because they're completely different F one cars. They're completely you know the, who knows what the humidity it's not was. Difficult that, yeah. to compare. You look at one time and the other. He <laughs> drove it faster. That's it. Yeah, but you can spend all night at a pub dis- discussing with somebody and like you can waste hours saying, oh, you know, but it's not the same. It's, it's it was Michael Schumacher driving it. It wasn't. What? Yeah, it wasn't. But Lewis but Hamilton it, did it faster. That's Sorry. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, he did it faster. Jeremy who like Michael Schumacher or hate <laughs> Hamilton, <laughs> yeah. Lord Lewis of Arabia? Yeah, he, Anyways, no, he, yeah, did, he did it, it faster. The that new was, cars are faster now. That's insane, man. I yeah, didn't think it was gonna take like two years for them to like be completely faster. It's amazing. But who knows? 2017, something interesting that came from AMUS from uh, Michael Schmidt, not this Michael Schmidt, 
the F1 journalist Michael Schmidt. He's saying uh, eight out of 11 of the teams are against the 2017 rules now. Would that be the eight that are based out of England? Yeah, McLaren, <laughs> Red Bull, and Toro Rosso are the against votes. Oh, okay. So McLaren, super confident in their aerodynamic capabilities, I suppose. And Red Bull, Toro Rosso, uh, following Bernie's direction, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. That's There's not a lot of info. I don't know. That's about it. Well, okay. Let's... Uh, Hang on a minute, because I think that we kind of failed to discuss one of like what would be one of one of the elephants in the room when it comes to F1 right now, and it's the fact that there's so much bullshit going on off the track oh, with you, with the with the power play that the big you know the 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 gray haired men are struggling for power, and and thus we all must suffer uh, with this qualifying bullshit. Well, let me just read you. People. I have. I got too many windows on my computer open and this thing's going to explode so I can close them. A couple of stupid quotes from Bernie in the last week or so. <laughs> yeah. uh, after the GPDA letter, this came out after the show last week. Echo Stone says, F1 drivers are powerless windbags. <laughs> they should just drive the car and keep their mouth shut. He said, all they do is take money out of the sport. They never put any in back themselves. You take him out for dinner and they don't even pay. What an asshole. That's what he said. He said, uh, Ecclestone wants either ballast, ballots or ballasts as new F1 qualifying. So reiterating his other ideas, this was uh, on the first, so just before this quality happened, after the other one. Uh, he wants to just mix up the grid any way he can, any stupid idea. Basically, his idea, or this idea, is that if you get pole... If you get first, second, third, fourth, depending what place you get in, you get a certain blue screen. I was trying to close these fucking windows. Look at this. I told you, the last time this happened again was at your fucking house. It happens every time. <laughs> it's happened the last three weeks, man. I knew it. I, I felt it was going to blow up. <laughs> it's going to catch on fire, man. I need to, we're going to get a, a fire extinguisher, a flat out fever extinguisher <laughs> <laughs> my computer. We need like this like little small one. That yeah, we just keep it like yeah, a little just, glass just case. Always pointing at Danny's computer. <laughs> My computer was run. Yeah, we need one of those um, infrared cameras that they were using last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're racing. <laughs> My computer was running flat out, and I got fear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Bernie said anymore. I don't know what he said. Well, he he said a bunch of shit. Who cares? Like, he's old and crazy. Yeah, it's it and, and it, between him and what Jean Todd has been saying is so is so retarded. Apparently, Monsieur Todd has said that he's read hundreds of pages of social media. <laughs> what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Like that, I've <laughs> been on Twitter. Like yeah. Okay. Yeah yeah. That, that, that's what no a hundred. I've, I've, Sir John, this, I, this social media is. I've read hundreds of pages of it. <laughs> I've I, been I on the need, YouTube. I don't. I don't need to read any more pages of this social media. And he I do that every week. Man. He even, Come he, on. He even I'm said writing something hundreds like, of pages of social media. Here, listen. Here's here's what he said. He said also, uh, Monsieur Todd, that he wasn't gonna let social media <laughs> dictate what, what 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 was needed in the sport. What if was, you if you expand what was that, that survey about that they no, asked no us. but listen Come if on, if you okay. expand that no, the, the survey was from the GPDA it wasn't yeah. from the FIA yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you take that if you translate that to any modern business because any modern business anywhere else in the world you know in the world they where it makes millions sense, of dollars they did that right? for, we did that for free and yeah. they had it answered for free yeah whereas like. FOM oh. or the FIA would have paid probably some company hundreds of thousands to millions oh, of dollars for, for people to, to acquire and, and aggregate and that lie, data. Actually, yeah, with like those focus groups, at least because focus groups are bullshit. But not even that. Just yeah, yeah. any other company in the world right now, they, they oh, it's okay. especially company any company that has direct contact with consumer uh, consumers they have a social media department and 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 if something happens in, in social media they have to react quick like yeah. coca-cola like if somebody like starts uh, shit posting about like a new product you best believe that they're gonna have they're gonna find a way to like reconcile with this guy if if a famous blogger or twitter or comes and like starts like yeah. bad mouthing your product you're gonna want to talk to them and be like yo like yo, let's we'll give like, you a bunch of free yeah, shit or, yeah, or, shut like, the fuck like, up yeah or, like what's what they pay attention they have to pay attention because that's you're you're basically with with social media. You've whether they want it or not. There's been this new line of communication with your customers. Mm -hmm. 
It, it, it happened before, man. Check out this example. Uh, without mentioning companies or names, a friend of mine has a car who had, which has a recall on its airbags. He called up. He got a recall notice from them, from their yeah. worldwide head office that said, sorry, your car has bad airbags that might kill you if they go off mm. because they explode. So he, he went to the dealership and said, I need you to change the airbags in my defective airbag car. Mm -hmm. And they said, we, we can do that for you, but the parts won't be available for five to six months. So he said, hey, I'm not going to you know, expect me to drive this around. Mm -hmm. Possibly I could die. You could die if it goes off by accident. Right. Because yeah. the airbags themselves explode and Jeez, shoot shrapnel Christ. on your face. So they, they refused to rent him a car until the airbags could be fixed. So he went on Twitter and said, mm -hmm. hey, this auto company, do you uh, need to give me a rental car? So he, th they responded the same day, said, hey, come back to the dealership. We'll set you up. And uh, he drives the highest or second highest model of vehicle. Oh, and my they, God. So they f at first gave him something like... Low tier? Like, yeah, l like, like a like com compact car. car yeah. <clears throat> he complained again. And, and also they refused to give his keys back. They said, we'll hold your car here because they don't want him driving it, right? Mm, yeah. He said, listen, I'm not going to drive it. So he had to fight them again. And then they agreed. He got to take the car back, got it brought to his house. Mm hmm kept in his garage and then they upgraded his rental vehicle to similar cl similar class to what he owns and he's going to drive that for a few months but social media got it done that day they right. told him basically go fuck yourself we'll fix your car later sorry if you die yeah twitter well, fixed that problem no it, it, but it's, it's not twitter it's the fact that these companies internet, at a, at a, at a very power. high level even if the foot soldiers don't they care and yeah. they have to care about their public perception right. yeah because yeah. now social media what ha what what it has allowed is a, a direct link between your customers your consumers and and the product and you and and the corporate world and and it's and and if something bl gets blown out of proportion mm -hmm. it can be really really bad for the company now jean Todd saying to, to us fans basically saying fuck twitter if if any car any major car company and they understand this and or any major like producer of goods that go to the, cons the to consumer says fuck what you're saying is social media you know what's gonna happen like this their sales are gonna drop they're yeah. gonna get a backlash from the customers huge nobody's gonna stop talking about it mm -hmm. and and things like things will happen because f1 <clears throat> perceives that they're immune to the fans to their customers. Yeah. And let's not forget it. They just, <laughs> it it's, how is this so hard to understand? I, I they can't. exist and these people are living in worlds of untold luxury because there's fans yeah. that, that watch the sport. Do not go anti... Like, to what point, man, is, is it going to become acceptable that the governance of Formula One goes and just antagonizes the fan? At one point, it, there's going to be, like, it's going to reach a cracking point. I think yeah. uh, a big point that they're missing, um, obviously, that being one of them, is yeah. that like this is where your new fans are growing up. Yeah, this is this is it on like, the internet. Want, on the internet, like that's life. I grew that's up on life. the internet. Yeah, that's and life like, now. They got to realize that they have to respect this sort of thing if they want to create new fans because the old ones are gonna die. They're dying right now. I mean, I'm not dying, but like, oh, everybody's dying. I'm, I'm, eventually, we'll all die. But I mean. The most people I know that are into motorsports are older people. Just like old European people. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, guten tag. But at the same time, I think something like MotoGP and Formula E is pulling in a lot of new viewers because they're doing new things. No, like, they're, com they're fully embracing <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. everything that F1 is and not embracing. MotoGP especially. I, I'm seeing it everywhere. Whereas, I don't know. I've never, I've honestly, I've never watched the full race. I know like who few of the top guys are and stuff, but just the outside, I've seen it a bunch of places recently. Yeah, it's been and creepy. we've seen it work. We've seen like how respecting social media, not even respecting it, but like using it properly, yeah. and like communicating with your fan base, whatever it may be, yeah. how effective that can be at uh, gaining traction or like hyping shit up or letting people know. How, like, there's so many things about it. Yeah, engagement. That, yeah, engagement. That's, what, that's what it is about. But yeah it's, it's gonna take a long time or a revolution 
for these people that are in the pa in power in F1 to even realize that that's a thing because the problem is and 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 Joe Sayward journalist extraordinaire will not waste a second in telling you that these guys right at the top are surrounded by an army of people an army of yes men that they're not like th the outside world has to go through that impenetrable barrier yeah. of filters and filters and filters until it gets to them. Yeah. And everybody's telling them, oh, don't worry. F1, F1. Yeah. People are watching F1. Like, there's a... Oh, dude, yeah. No, have you're you, cool. Have you, you're cool. <laughs> haven't you seen around you? Everybody's watching F1. Everybody cares about F1 because the guy only lives, like... In, in, F, in that F1 bubble. Yeah, he, he never, they never leave the paddock. They never yeah. go out to yeah. see what's going on. They have a, a completely askew, and they only have millionaire friends. Mm -hmm. yeah, a completely askew view of what the world outside their, their F1 bubble Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. I know a lot of people just like that in my life. Not about <laughs> F1, but, like, they yeah. just live in these bubbles. You're like, oh, okay. You, you know the world is much different than that, right? And they're like, Pwah. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> Maybe. Um. Yeah, the final Bernie quote. My computer's back here. See if it lasts a few <laughs> seconds. So we sort of been following the EU, EU type stuff. So that's be it's been ongoing. Yeah. Marguerite Verstager that we talked about mm -hmm. is the the head of the competitions commission of the EU. Yeah. They're still, I guess, continuing to look into all of the allegations. But Bernie says conversations have taken place and they will do what's the right thing to do. Who's they? They, the competition commission. Oh, yeah. Margareta Vestager or whatever uh, her name is. And he, his other quote, they're starting to get more and more interested in the anti-competitive way that we've got. So there's his admission of guilt of that. And then when he was asked um, whether the EU investigation could finally result in some of the contracts they have coming to an end, like the Concord agreement, team agreements with the payouts for winning and not winning, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, he replied, yeah, if the e EU got really excited about what about it, they could look at it and say, yeah, you got to tear that up. Yeah, but... That's his three words. But Listen, but the problem is that Bernie he, wants the, the Concord agreement to be put down a shredder. He he. That's what he wants. That's his whole angle. That's we've been talking about this since last year, since Force He's, India. He has and a Sauber. better chance of now than now of getting more power for himself because oh, yeah. his own power has been eroded over the decades. Mm -hmm. And if, and, and, if, and, if, if that was, you, you know, what's funny that his 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 power has been eroded over the decades. Thanks to deals that he himself, himself has brokered. He, he did it. Yeah, he did it to himself. Yeah. But this, this, as you say, w would give him the best chance of rewriting everything. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he likes dictatorships. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a <laughs> big he told Ted on the weekend. Okay, let's, did, uh, he likes the idea of being a dictator. There's a huge power play for like now money and Dating. control. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 in F one, the, the little the little money that there is really because there's there's not a lot there's not a lot as there, as there could be because we we still have to consider the giant parasitic tick that's sucking all the blood out of F one in CVC Capital Partner yeah, Capital Partners and the two guys knocking at their door with with checks <laughs> but, but, but blank apparently that's, spaces on the amount whoever that whoever that might be that's a, that's a, as far as I could tell uh, that's the Miami Dolphins owner no but that's no we quite we could be quite sure that's probably one of the two no it's apparently not it's a fairly quite unsubstantiated mm -hmm. that this th this thing like these these numbers of Mer the bernie because if you look at it you know who's been uh publishing that that stuff it's been uh his buddy christian silt uh, the, and oh. you got you gotta tell you gotta be careful with anything that christian silt says because that's bernie's puppet <laughs> um by joe sayward a uh, journalist extraordinaire and crusader permanent crusader against bernie <laughs> has said that 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 claim that there's two people yeah uh looking for that uh, to buy f1 is completely unsubstantiated there's not a lot to it um uh, not a lot to that uh right now what this might be actually is part of the grander scheme that Bernie what like there's 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 something in the works right now and and all this stuff with Vegas that we've heard um, with Sauber 
with uh, even like in Monza in, and the, the EU Commission. It's all related to this huge power struggle mm. that's happening right now in F1. All right, one look. One of the things is definitely like you saw <laughs> uh, the, the F1 Commission thing. The thing about the F1 Commission is that what they can do is they they, they will be allowed to do this is tear the Concord Agreement apart. How does this benefit the, the EU Commission? The EU Commission. Yeah. They can tear the Concord Agreement apart because it's a, it's anti-competitive. But the Concord Agreement, the, the problem with it, or, or like why Bernie would want that, is because he had to define, whereas he didn't used to. He just sort of like left as much open to interpretation before in terms of like how much money each team gets or whatever. Mm-hmm. He had to really define that and make broker all these deals with the teams for back in uh remember when he was planning to do uh the ipo, IPO. In the, yeah, yeah in the singapore, the singapore stock, stock, stock yeah. market they wanted to float formula yeah. one as a whole and it, w- it, it got it got really close except there was a financial crisis mm. that, that, that really derailed everything it's just bad timing they decided and canceled it exactly but in, in order for you to be able to get together an IPO, an initial public offering, basically turn your company and open it up to the stock markets, there are certain things that like that need to happen even before that. Mm. And all kinds of external audits need to happen where like you bring in a bunch of accountants from another company and they report to other people and they just kind of really, really meddle into your business and you really, really have to um, define like down to the nitty gritty, no, no loose handshake agreements Put it down in paper. Yeah. So, out of X dollars that get into the in the, like you know that of revenue, who gets what? What gets parsed out there? And in order for Bernie to be able to like s- to even produce that document, he had to broker the Concord Agreement that stands today that is valid until 2020. 2020. So until 2020, all this bullshit redistribution of the money that everybody's complaining about, that everybody says is at the is at the core of uh, Formula One's struggle and, and, and struggle with governance cannot be touched until 2020. But it was only done so, it was only done so, so that Bernie could sell F1, but that never happened. Oh, so they're stuck wow. with a system that was designed for something else. Anyway, it's a mess. It's a big mess. It's in that really, There's only, to sell now, there's only four years left in that agreement, Yeah, which... If you're making a billions of dollars investment, that's not enough time to have any guaranteed yeah. any any guaranteed plans for a business. It's got, it's gonna need to be a new agreement that's gonna last ten or fifteen more years and say this is who's in charge oh until God. then and who it, has inve- what say what say the teams investors have, are gonna how much demand the payments get because at 2020 that's yeah. if you have billions of dollars to invest in a something as volatile as an international championship sport like yeah. Formula One <laughs> yeah. with huge players who are also billionaires. Ar- the, the, and arguably an arguably dwindling audience. Blue screen again. Fuck. Finish your thought though. I don't get it. Yeah, that that's that's not enough. The the EU or yeah, the the EU or if someone from anywhere that's that's you need it defined. It, it, if you're an the, investor of uh, willing to put down the big bucks, mm-hmm. yeah. you're gonna want two things. You want you're gonna want clarity, yeah, of where where all the money's going, and stability where it's, where it's stability. coming from. You and, need, yeah, you and need, where it's coming from. You need your revenue projections for at least five years, at least five, but, and, well, and, like and you, proof or 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 more depending on how much money you're putting in. So it's it's very difficult, and it, and it. F one is is running out of time in many 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 departments mm. for sure, and one of that is one of them. Now you have this on one side, and Bernie, for sure, wants the Concord Agreement to be broken up because the Concord Agreement, you know, the, the money distribution and all that. One of the consequences is that it also gave the manufacturers the power that they have now. Bernie doesn't want me. Bernie has no. has not been liking Marchione and doesn't like the the the, the rhetoric that Marchione has been saying, and that's why he wants uh, um, the Concord Agreement broken up. But Marchione has another look, for sure. He has another card and, uh, and another few cards. This is a guy that is going to be hard to outmaneuver, for sure. <laughs> the like, we'll we'll definitely touch on that in a few. You talking about Sauber, yeah, Alfa Romeo, oh yeah. Should we uh, talk about this with our guest? Uh, maybe if or there's room it? for that. 
Okay. Uh, in a minute, guys, uh, we're gonna we're just gonna go um, off air here for a second, and we're, we'll be back with our guest of the show today, Mr. Tim Haraney. He's the uh, Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR TV correspondent for TSN. Oh, he's, he's the analyst. The anyway, analyst. We'll, 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 we'll let him. We'll let him introduce okay. himself in a second. Uh, yeah, so analyst. we'll be off air, and we'll be back with the second part of the show and our guest for today. And uh, as we promised, we have uh, a very special guest. Uh, thank you so much again uh, uh, for agreeing to be in the show. Uh, he is the uh, F1 and motorsport analyst at uh, TSN, about many things, um, and uh, professional racing driver. Tim we Haraney. Were, yeah. What, what else? We hope that we didn't butcher your name too much here, no, man. No, no, you guys got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, yeah, welcome no, to the show. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, Nice to finally put uh, faces uh, with the names, so it's, uh, it's cool, man. I like what you guys got going on here. It's pretty cool. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you. You have more faces faces around the internet than we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but uh, it's a, I don't know. You guys are pretty popular. Let me tell you. Oh. <laughs> That's news to us. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't think that. But thank no, th Thank you. Thank you so much again. Um, we we really appreciate it. We can't wait. To get right into it, uh, but why don't you like just for uh, the people that because we, we do have some international uh, viewers and listeners, uh, if you want to just uh, quickly uh, say a couple words about yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. So my name's Tim Harini. Um, raced, uh, raced, been racing since I was nine years old. Uh, started in go karts, obviously, and worked my way up through the racing ladder: Formula Ford, uh, Formula Two Thousand, uh, Formula Renault. I was part of the Renault Driver Development Program into Formula One. Um, from there, raced uh, in Champ Car Atlantics, which is now branded as Indy Lights, and from oh. that did some did some testing in Champ Car a little bit. That, that's and, like the GP two uh, of of Indy, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly what it is. The feeder series. And, uh, from there, went over to Europe, uh, raced for Porsche in the FIA GT Championship. Uh, I was the only Canadian to uh, to do that. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so it was, so it was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun <laughs> doing that. Came back and and started doing a lot of work with uh, auto manufacturers. And I still, to this day, do a ton of work for auto manufacturers. I work a lot uh, with Ferrari and Maserati across Wicked. Canada, uh, nationally. I uh, just actually got back from Vancouver working for uh, working for Maserati. So, um, yeah, I do that as well. And uh, a little bit of work for Nissan on the side. And when I'm not doing all that, I'm working for uh, work for TSN as uh, the racing analyst, handling all of our F1 and, um, you know, NASCAR, IndyCar kind of needs. And uh, if they need me to go on air and talk about that kind of stuff, I do. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, keep... we, we actually were just watching your recap of, uh, of the Bahrain race. And I love it. I really love it. <laughs> That that you that you put in that thing with Alonso and uh, and Johnny Herbert that was great. <laughs> yeah, whenever whenever I make uh, whenever I produce uh, the highlights, I always I always try to keep um, I go I try to keep the average fan uh, engaged, but I always want to try and touch on the the hardcore fan because the hardcore fan really wants to see those underlying stories yeah. like Roman Grosjean finishing fifth and Stoffel yeah. Van Dorn. Uh, you know, uh, finishing 10. How good was you know, that? Result. Uh, that was absolutely outstanding. <laughs> so, like, racing fans, hardcore fans really want to see that, but I always have to try and mix in, uh, you know, the Lewis Hamiltons, the Rosbergs, the rivalry between the two of them to kind of spice things up as well. But, yeah, I always I always try, whenever I'm producing the F1 content, I always make sure to uh, just keep the hardcore racing fan in mind. So, What do you think? Do you agree with Johnny Herbert? No, especially not at all. After, especially <laughs> after what Van Doren did in his car. No, like, come on. Uh, Fernando Alonso is a double world champion. Uh, the guy, yeah. if you were to go back and look at last year's uh, qualifying results and just see how close him and Jensen Button were together, like, uh, at any given time, they were only one to two tenths off of each other. Both of them are still hungry. Like, you can't sit there and say that the guy should retire when, you know, obviously he still he still has what it takes to make a bad car fast and yeah. that McLaren Honda, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's well, not you, the greatest, right? If, yeah. if fly, it flies really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does do that. That's for sure. Yeah, it just shots fired right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate the guy. But if you see the full, the full speed video. <laughs> but, oh man. He's Fernando is, is so lucky after, oh, uh, geez, yeah. 
Yeah, after that crash, he's he's so lucky. He, you know what? A lot of people say that these guys aren't athletes, but you know what they have to go through in the cockpit of a race car. Forty six G, unbelievable. But yeah, but, but you're but you're thinking of like not only that, but like you're wrestling like a thousand pound beast that's trying to get away from you. You know, with <laughs> five to six Gs, you're pulling longitudinally and latitudinally all race all the time. Yeah, yeah all like for an hour and a half, an Non-stop, hour and thirty five. Yeah. While, while maintaining like super concentration on what you have to do, how to approach your corners, watch watch your markers. I'm I'm not a very I'm I'm not a very good driver, not by any stint. I'm 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 one of those. He's, he's awful at the yeah, game. Too. I, I, yeah, I'm one of those <laughs> F1 fans that like like you know like not because I don't play sick bass doesn't mean that I can't appreciate jazz. <laughs> but right, but I, I I can appreciate this sport, but I'm a terrible terrible driver. When when I've tried to drive, like I can I can you know. I have done some laps that I've been proud of, but I can't maintain it. I never could. I can never think of of a, of a racing track and start memorizing breaking points just by looking at a chip in the in the paint over there. Like, how do you how do you do that? Well, yeah, a big part of it is is trying to get re- really good reference points. So you have to remember, um, we're gonna get really hardcore here, guys. All right, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Know, like buckle up. So when you're coming, obviously down a Obviously, obviously down a straightaway, yeah. going into a corner, you know, you have to have some sort of a reference marker for braking. And once braking is initiated, you're really applying about 500 foot pounds of pressure into that brake pedal because you got to stop the car, right? You got to get it slowed down. Yeah. At the same time, you're downshifting and you're trying to like look as far ahead as possible to see the apex and the exit because the further you look ahead, through like sl- through this much. <laughs> yeah exactly the, the, the slower the slower everything kind of becomes yeah. um and that's a big thing that you learn is is always trying to look as far ahead as you can because the information uh is coming at you so fast that your brain needs to process what is happening because you're processing information that's visually coming at you but you're also processing information that's coming you know into your body into yeah. your chest you know through your legs you're kind of feeling what the the back end of the car is doing by the seat of your pants. So it's uh, well, that's it's always important to have a braking reference marker. It's so important. Absolutely, absolutely. And then hit it. Yeah, like 60, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sometimes times in it's in not row. even like uh, it's, sometimes it's not even a mark in the wall. Except I've used uh, bumps in the pavement. Um, some some people use like flagging stands. Uh, some people have known to use like if there's a cut in the grass where the grass kind of turns to pavement or the grass turns that's, to asphalt, like that's a marker. That, like, that's what Lewis Hamilton said that you know he, that that he judges sometimes even by a mistake that the person that was painting the white line made. Like if they just like went off wow. a little bit. Yeah. 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 If, even if yeah, even if there's a small little uh, nick, well, it has to be quite big obviously to see it, but. Yeah. Just something that's like an error, even in the pavement that you can see. Uh, you know, that is is huge um, in terms of like a reference marker, and that kind of helps with confidence uh, with braking. Because with braking, you know, you have to remember you're approaching something at a fair rate of speed. So uh, to get the best out of of uh, braking and the efficiency of it, you you have to have a good reference so you can push the limit from there on out. Because you have the reference. Okay, now it's time to go for a qualifying lap. Mm-hmm. I'm going to push my reference a little bit further and see what happens. And that's kind of like where everyone says, you know, seems you're on a hot lap, pushing it over the limit. That's part of pushing it over the limit. So yeah, It seems so scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I've, I've done it in the video games and my heart gets pounding. I can imagine <laughs> going 300 doing it. Dude, I have a hard time yeah, going like 120 oh. on the highway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Think about like you know, three hundred, you know, Formula One car, you know, down at the top speed on a straightaway, like what, almost three hundred and thirty kilometers an hour, and <laughs> and then you got to think of all the force that it takes to slow the car down. Oh, yeah. So you're you're not using five hundred foot pounds of force on the brake pedal. You're you're now going to use like six or seven to try and really attack it and really get the most out of the braking. It's okay. I, ha- I have this theory, but I ha- it's completely unfunded. We just like been speculating about this like, since for a while. You know how the brake in a racing car is on the on the on the right on, on like on the well at least the F- f1 cars have their their brake pedal is the right one is that because with your dominant what? leg you get like maybe more of a feel of when you like how much you have to brake or or no so 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 the gas pedal is, is always on the, on, on the right, right. Oh, the brakes always on, on the, the right. left brake pedal brakes on the left is, is, on the left. is, on is the it left. a switch on an f1 car 
I may be uh, completely wrong. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm wrong. He doesn't no. drive. So. I'm you just, I, don't, I don't drive like I said. On, on a road car, you'd, you'd, use, you'd just use your one foot for both. Yeah. But you have, you have one on each because sometimes you need to press both at once. Yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. there's, no, there's no foot clutch anymore. No. There's no hey, heel hey, and towing you. anymore. They, they oh. did that sometimes with old cars where you'd heel and tow. Oh, that, and Senna was the master of that. Yeah. yeah. yeah he was I used stank. to practice in my Honda Civic. <laughs> Heel and towing, dude. Well, yeah, no, I think two, that's two, why you two, can't two foot. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know where the foot, where the pedal is. <laughs> Tim, you're 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 from you're from Uxbridge. No, right? actually, or, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you, your Wikipedia is wrong. <laughs> oh man, I didn't even know there was a Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, there, there's some article on the internet that says that you're from Uxbridge. Oh, uh, I'm actually, Peter, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm from a little village called uh, Keene. It's in Ontario. It's uh, about Peterborough. 30 minutes northeast of Peterborough. Oh, oh yeah. fuck. I went, to, I went to Trent, actually. So I spent a, <laughs> okay. good, a good good few years there. Well, I mean, not so good, but so, you know. Is there a, a, a decades-long, generations-long motorsport tradition up there? Uh, no, actually, where, where I grew up, yeah, there was Farm about, buggies uh, and dirt bikes. The, yeah, dirt bikes. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I, I did a purse. lot of, I did, I did a ton of dirt biking. Um, did you have a field four car? Four wheeler. Yeah. I, well, I, well, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, the dirt, dirt bikes were a big thing. We built like our own little course out in the back of uh, my parents, um, my my parents' field. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we, we would zoom around on dirt bikes and stuff back there. But hey, yeah, have, have you ever been to man, Gopher Dunes? What's that? Have you ever been out to Gopher Dunes? Oh no, never! That actually, I that's something that I would like to do for, for sure. Like I've heard about it; it's pretty bad. My pretty, uncle owns that. Cool. My uncle owns that. <laughs> oh no way! Really? Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. They got some like tobacco farms and dirt tr- dirt bike <laughs> racing up there. <laughs> oh, cool! I'm sure you guys have a blast when you go out there. I haven't been for maybe two years or so, but yeah, they they've had like some Red Bull events. They have a national motocross events there now. Podcast oh, field trip. Awesome. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we should oh, make a field trip. <laughs> and my grandparents used to own a trailer park near, near there, like maybe like ten minutes from there, as well. Okay, okay, that's but, awesome. Yeah, it's but okay. Here's where I was driving with that question because uh, clearly you're you, you you got into motorsports and to me like Canada and North America in general like there's there, it's it's not you're you're never too far from a racetrack or or a dirt bike track or or you know the, the dunes or whatever but it seems like motorsport at least nowadays is just not as popular as it could should be maybe um the like, indie race downtown which is in in trouble i hear like it's like it, the honda indy like it, it's been it was it, it's been handed over from molson from steel Bath, from this and that and like it's I don't know like probably the future of it is not as much in question as Monza but <laughs> but um, but you know what I mean like it's 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 it might not get the attendances that it could if or that it should if maybe motorsport was just bigger more popular mm. in North America is it um well he, here's the thing right guys so if you go back to the the, the heyday of, of IndyCar uh, across Canada. You know, you're looking at back in the, the 80s and 90s and the very early 2000s. When Juan Pablo um, was racing IndyCars? Yeah, against, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like those, those, um, that, that time uh, was huge for motorsports in Canada. Like, you know, the, the, the Toronto Indy would get, you know, upwards of, you know, 80 to 90,000 people attending just the race, not, not including just the race weekend. So, uh, that alone right there, you know, it, it does state that we do have a strong following. The problem was is when IndyCar split into Champ Car yeah. and then into the IRL. And, and that is basically what fractured um, racing, not only in Canada, but across North America okay. as, as well. That split was uh, so um, uh, destructive to the sport in North America that it just... It's just now starting to to rebound and come back. You know, if you look at uh, the viewership for IndyCar in North America, it has risen uh, dramatically, and that is actually IndyCar is actually the only open wheel racing that has seen an increase in viewership um, in North America. Yeah. Uh, 
our actually our F one um, from from last year, we had like a big jump in viewership as well over at uh, TSN because they've been doing such a great job um, with the product that they own that it's uh, it's really starting to gain a lot of momentum and uh, people are starting to tune back in and, and I'm I'm trying to be that guy who kind of helps and and pushes it kind of back. It'll probably never be what it used to be, but I'm I'm one of the guys who is just trying really, really to get motorsports uh, back on the radar in Canada because, as you guys know, you're racing fans, you know that we've had some very great Canadian race car drivers, and our country produces a one, lot of great talent. One, one, one of the legends of all time, like people people in in you know the the, the great motorsports hall like halls are still talking about whether or not it was Senna or Vilnev that was the greatest of all time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that argument is still yeah. is very relevant to this day. You know, you can, like, obviously the two different eras of formula are a little different. Yeah. But that being said, uh, both talent, like, both super talented. Which is... <laughs> yeah. And I, I just love it how... Um, I, I people from uh, from outside of Canada, especially British people that I've spoken to, they talk about uh, Villeneuve in a different light that that I would see Villeneuve because they 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 really like they they praise him for his heroism and and for really going for it. But to me, that's just a good old Canadian boy that was just giving <laughs> yeah. her. And he was he went out there and he gave her all day. <laughs> And on the other hand, Jack gets all the sh all the shit. That's true. Well, he, Jack he's, may have spoken a little bit he's too got, much. He's got a bit of an attitude sometimes. But. <laughs> yeah, Jacques is Jock, right? But yeah. his dad was unbelievable. And you know what? If it if it wasn't for his dad, you know, I may not have ever started racing because Gilles is the one who got my father interested in oh, yeah. in racing. Nice. And you know, once that happened, I you know I would wake up every morning with my dad and, and watch Formula One, and and uh, I I love Dyer and Senna. So if it wasn't for like those two drivers, you know who who knows what would happen to the sport in this country? Oh, that's man. for sure. Oh man, you'd be shucked up in a in a, in a cubicle with a suit, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I, uh... I just don't know. I, don't know. I, I guess if I like like the job and then, you know if I enjoy the job, then that's just part of it. You know what I mean? I think I'm that kind of guy where it's like if it's, uh, if it's something I really like doing, then it's I always look at the things that you don't like the most. You just look at it and be like, hey, that's just part of the job. You yeah. know? Yeah. Well, hey, we're here doing this for free. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, passion, passion for it. So that's amazing. One thing that I think that was very enlightened and, and and very good for the for the Canadian fans at least is uh, the the move, the recent move of TSN as of this year to take the Sky uh, commentary. Which I mean, I love DC as much as the next guy, but Brundle is the best commentator. He's he's <laughs> the he's the guy. He's yeah. the guy. And and they just it, it, Channel you guys, 4 got Murray Walker though. Well, you know what? I I didn't know because last year you guys only did half an hour of a pre-show, but this year you do the full thing. The with you know, that's amazing. Yeah, no the the people over at TSN did a great job in getting us that Sky Sports deal because yeah, it nice. is totally awesome. Yeah, and a nice. great point you make about uh, Brundle because I love David Coulthard. I love his commentary mm -hmm. during the race. I think he's spot on. I think he. I think he gives um, that extra little bit of insight that maybe Brundle can't mm -hmm. because he hasn't been in the car in so in so long. Right. But that being said, Brundle can just come out and speak his mind yeah. and say whatever he wants to say and, and not get in trouble, which is which is what you what you want in in the type of broadcast that that is. Like he he does a great job at that. Yeah, he's on a different kind of pushing the limit. <laughs> yeah, it, that definitely is though, right, guys? Like, it, you know, Formula limit. One in, in the paddock area can be can be a political place, oh, but yeah. oh, it, it uh, is. <laughs> yeah, but like for a guy like Brundle to come in there and throw his weight around, I think that's pretty awesome, especially for the viewer at home that's yeah. always wondering like, what's going on here? Like, why isn't this being explained properly, or isn't this injustice? And then he's basically the guy who will tell it straight, which is. Yeah. is yeah. I mean, I I long for a day to. Uh, that the old BBC F1 commentary team would be reunited with uh, Brundle and Coulthard because that that was that was good commentary. That not honestly that that did a lot at least to uh, 
because I started watching, I started re-watching, like re-getting really, really hardcore into F1, into watching all the races as soon as I could um, when when they were commentating together. And I was I was living in Spain at the time. <clears throat> Whatever the case, it's just, just because I had stopped kind of following the sport for a little bit, they they did a good job at actually like reacquaint, like you know, to, to get reacquainted with the sport, to get to get to learn to love the sport mm-hmm. again. Really, uh, so I'm I'm glad that you guys got TSN or sorry, uh, the, the TSN got Sky. Now, was that like like? Do you have any insight as to like how how those deals kind of get brokered? Like, is 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 does, Ber- <laughs> does Bernie have his sticky eighty five year old tentacles like in there? Because it, for people that don't know, in England, Sky is a pay service, exclusive F one content. They have their own channel. Uh, well, you, as of, you, pay, as of, you pay for that. Content. As of China, they're gonna have streams available to them that nobody else has in England. So. Yeah, well, for for us in, in Canada, I, I can't speak too much about the about the uh, the deal because I don't really know too much about how it kind of, how it came together. Mm-hmm. Um, I highly doubt Bernie Ecclestone was involved, but uh, <laughs> I think it, I think it just was a big push on TSN's part to yeah. to notice that you know, hey, this is this is a really great property that we have, mm-hmm. and you know, let's blow it up and really do something nice. for the fans. And they actually they literally were thinking about about the F1 fan when they went through and, and said, okay, so now that BBC has pulled out, maybe this is a great time for us to try and, and find um, something that the, the hardcore racing fan will, will love. And I think that's an amazing uh, statement from TSN to go out and really uh, you know, work it and try and get that deal done because you know, it's paying off in dividends because they... Nice. Their broadcast is is uh, is really good. Nice. Yeah, it's top notch. Th- Thank you very much. This this weekend we hosted uh, at a pub, uh, watch F one at Betty's event. Yeah, we showed, I, we showed I, the TSN. I invited you that without thinking that of course yeah, you're was gonna at, be was working. Work on the TSN. <laughs> <laughs> but for the hardcore fans, we had 20, 30 people show up, and uh, I think everybody loved it. It was awesome. Oh, you got to see the race live with the best yeah, no, commentary that's, available. That's amazing. That's oh, amazing. Yo, that's amazing. Hey, put the put put the picture up. Let, let's show them how many people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, we let had we had the full ups. Uh, have you ever been to Betty's on King? Uh, I've heard about it, but I've actually have never been there. Oh man, um, it's, it's, it's it's a good pub. <laughs> but so <laughs> they have this upstairs section that's basically decorated like there your you grandma's <laughs> uh, living room. But it's it's yeah, oh, it's big. Awesome. Can, can, okay. can you see that? Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. That's so cool, and guys. That, that's that, awesome. That's just one shot, like straight out to the middle of the room. There's more off to the side that that you don't see. But for but, the hardcore fans, we had people showing up at 10:30 in the morning on Sunday to come watch uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix. Yeah. So thank you, yeah. TSN. Yeah. Thank you. Thank TSN. you very much. Yeah. No, for sure. Well, I mean, yeah. You... Make sure you uh, make sure you you tweet them because uh, because they'd love to to hear that and to see stuff like that, man. Like uh, that, that that's great stuff. That you know you you guys should uh, yeah definitely always try. T- tweet uh, TSN Sports for sure, man. They love to see this. Yeah, stuff. nice. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we, we had a great turnout. Obviously, we have we always get more people for the live races because when when we can't do it live, then then we do the rebroadcast. The the whatever whatever happens at three o'clock or whatever. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, like, the, yeah, no, it it was a great showing, and and you can feel that more people are maybe are starting to get curious and i've noticed two big trends and maybe you can you can expand on that uh, tim one uh, is yeah yeah dude sorry sorry i cut you off there. Yeah, go no. ahead well oh, the, the one is disgruntled nascar fans apparently with this the chase thing it's it's got a lot of nascar fans saying screw this let's see what what else is out there because this is not a competition anymore you know the, the same can be the yeah. same can almost be said for place. for f1 and yeah you know, after after these past after these past couple weekends, when uh, you know with this this qualifying that is like they've got it fixed because it's mm-hmm. it's awful. But uh, that being said, you know the same could probably be said for Formula One. You know, sometimes Formula One fans do feel alienated, oh, yeah. and you know they go looking for other things yeah. uh, as well, like yeah. like IndyCar. Yeah. Like you know, IndyCar's ratings have have come up like through North America. Mm-hmm. So is that the Hardcore F1 fan starting to look for something a little bit different, and mm-hmm. they found that in IndyCar, or maybe they go to NASCAR. You know, so it's it's um, it, 
it, it, it can be said for both sports. You know what I mean? That uh, they're two diff, totally different sports. Mm-hmm. NASCAR, Formula One, mm-hmm. uh, both are are so different. But I think if you're a motorsports fan, yeah, you'll you'll watch anything. Oh, I, I, maybe maybe the presence of Haas and how good did they do last weekend uh, has has gone a long way to like make for it the more Americans especially more, more digestible for Americans for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For for the American uh, public, I think that the the Haas F1 story uh, is pretty amazing, right, guys? Like it's uh, it's nice to hear uh, someone as passionate as a guy like Roman Grosjean, you know, really screaming. The American you know, dream, like, yeah, yeah. But he's like, you know, he's so into it, and he's saying yeah, like, yeah. this is like the American dream or yeah. whatever. And, that, and that's an American team, you know. Yeah. Sure, they have some of the parts from Ferrari, and they get their, they need to get their engines from somewhere, yeah. and they get them from Ferrari, which is, which is totally legit. But you know, that being said, it is an American team, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's, I think that's a great story. I think that's a great story for Formula One for to Formula try One, and yeah. grow the, to grow that brand in in, yeah. uh, in USA. I, it. I find it great because they're not like, and and inevitably like this is for sure gonna become a story soon, sooner than later, where the smaller teams or the midfield teams are gonna start being like, oh, what are you doing, has if one something must be illegal, but it's not. It's all within the rules. They've done everything that that could be done. They just the only thing that they did differently than say, uh, for Cindia or 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 a Sauber is to come to terms with the fact that you do you can be a manufacturer and not make every single part and of your the, chassis. At the same time they've stated that their goal, their goal moving forward is to build as many parts as they can themselves. Yeah. They, they started they started this way and they're going to build out re- remember, their own team as as, as quickly as, as they can. Re- remember as re- parts remember that handle. guy from Air Asia and his catering effort? Yeah, <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gone. Yeah, they, they don't they, exist they, anymore. They, they they came into F1 with maybe as much money as Haas did, and they were never anything but a backmarker and like a painful to watch backmarker at, at times. And look at Haas doing everything right, getting getting stuff done, getting into the points the first two the first two races into like like let's be honest after causing a red flag in Australia. Fifth place yeah. is like it, that's not, that's not an accident. No, 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 that's that's a, that's a legit great drive by uh, by Grosjean, and he had a car that could that could his, accommodate uh, his drive. Exactly, in his driving style, you know, and the the great thing, I think about that uh, the Delara, it's because Delara makes uh, a lot of action, like a lot of the car, like the Delara makes a big part of that yeah. that chassis that they run, and which was a smart move by by Genie Haas to. You know, outsource yeah. uh, Delara to make them a Formula One car instead yeah. of spending all of that money to try and build their own. Allegedly designed by product. Haas, though. Allegedly designed by Haas. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's... but you, you know, you got to think that like the, uh, the the Italians obviously had had a hand in it. And, and why not? Like you yeah, said, why why not? Because they're they have experience uh, designing pretty much every other chassis for every other F1 feeder series out there. Like, what, Formula 3, they designed all that. Don't, didn't they at one point they design all indies, of the indie ones? Indies as well. Yeah, or like, they yeah. still do indie cars. Yeah, they still do one indie. of two choices, no? No, they, they, still, they still make uh, the, whole the field? entire indie car, the indie car chassis. Oh, okay. Yeah, so pretty much everything. It's not like Dallara does not have a motorsport experience. They're not coming out of nowhere. And you know what's... You know what's okay, so one of the rules... Um, dictates that you can outsource these parts only to teams or, or only to organizations that are, aren't currently competing in Formula One. So has got Dallara. That means that somebody else, if they want to come and, and start doing that, they can't just go to Dallara now and ask for the same. They have to find somebody else. So they like they, it was well thought out. Gunter Steiner and Haas, like, they, they, they did the job. Yeah. Yeah, they did a brilliant job and it's just it just goes it's just showing you right now like you're seeing the product out on the track um and and that is just teamwork and that's just hard work of course they're gonna have they're gonna they're gonna struggle a little bit in the Mm -hmm. season i think um as every new team does you tend to get a little worn out by uh the f1 circus you know it, it goes across the world it is global guys are gonna get tired out um but that being said to have the start that they have had is an amazing story. It's just you cannot 
if you were to go back in December and tell him that, you know, Roman Grosjean was going to finish sixth and fifth in the first two rounds of the Formula One World Championship. Well, you, you would have been crazy. booed out the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it's it's yeah, it is an it is an amazing success story. I'm sure we're gonna be like talking about it and hearing about it for the rest of the year. How about that Van Dorn though? Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a great uh, that not only a great story, but you know, good good for him. He's 24 years old. Um, at that point, I always thought that with this new age of formula one that once you kind of get to 24 25 it's going to be harder for you to kind of break into formula one but i think van dorn is just kind of proving everybody wrong that it you know age is kind of just a number uh once once it comes to racing because his racing pedigree and his background he's you know multiple champion in different levels you know pretty much almost every racing series he's been in he's won a championship in which or been runner up extremely hard to do yeah if he's not won he's been runner up yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> and having a 10th place finish um you know in, in your first race basically just getting a phone call on a thursday night saying like hey you know you're on your way to uh to bahrain um <laughs> You're, you're driving now, and, yeah. and here's a ton of data that uh, we're going to shove your way. And you're going to have to analyze all this data. Yeah. Good luck with that one. And, like, and then it. came out of the Did box it. and was flying. Did it all, yeah. Uh, uh, out-qualified button. Uh, a world champion. Let's, let's not, I, 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 a lot of people put the 2009 championship under an asterisk, but he was. He was a world champion yeah, he was. that he out-qualified. Out wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Former world champion. <laughs> But <laughs> it, with, with with a with a with a very hard. I mean, he was. He, there was no way the button wasn't going to win that year. But anyway, <laughs> he was world champion. <laughs> uh, I got a question, um, and it, we we kind of already talked about it before. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I love watching it live is whenever I can, and TSN is the place to sort of do it. But you know, one of the biggest things for us was the commercials. Uh, that sort of seemed to jump in almost randomly. Now, is that like the only <laughs> approach to do that? Like, is there another way to do it? Because, you know, the other sports like hockey, baseball, football, there's breaks, there's a place for it. But when it comes to Formula One, it's like a hundred and... Earth, a, Earth is just powered minutes. by commercials. <laughs> yeah, the whole know, planet. You know, and I get that. Like, you know what? I'll take, I'll take uh, commercials at the bottom... You know, but like I, I want to see, I want to see the action just in case something happens. Like I think last, uh, the last race we were in the. Well, I mean, I, w when we show the 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 race at Betty's, we're kind of lucky because they have like a fifty something inch TV, so it's right. big, it's big enough to still see the oh, action, yeah, absolutely. even when it's only like being reduced to have the screen. But um, may, yeah, maybe maybe that's a concern. Yeah, well, obviously, I'm sure that that's, that's a concern that the fans have. Uh, is there anything down the pipelines that? TSN is looking into maybe. That's <laughs> true, guys. It, it's really that, that's uh, it's a really hard thing to do, right? And I yeah, think yeah. the no, best. That's why Sky pay... costs hundreds of dollars a year in the, in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. Right. And, and that's why you know, like Sky One, um, their stuff is is live kind of all the time because people are are paying for that. Uh, well, there's a demand there, number one, like yeah. more so than here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but with but with us, you know, with, with TSN, it is difficult um, to try and, and splice in commercials with race action. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they do their they definitely do their best because that's one of the things that a lot of people like tweet me or email me about is like, hey, you know, you cut into a commercial uh, during this type of action. And right, just like, right, oh, right. well, it wasn't me. You yeah, did it. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do I'm that. Like, First of all, it's really really hard because so you need. You need that commercial time. Yeah. Um, you, you just you just need it, mm -hmm. and they do their best job at trying to pick the right time in the race to sh to show that commercial because it's they they don't want to interrupt the track action, and there is points in a Grand Prix where there are lulls yeah, in it. Absolutely. Yes, there are. There is no yes. action, and they right. try and time it so they can get those commercials in around that lull, and oh, yeah. then they do their best, and that's all that you know. 
that that's all that we, you, we can uh, offer until uh, you know maybe they maybe we try and figure something else out maybe not later on down the road but yeah. but for now it's it's the best form of action. It's actually you, you know what it might it might also be like like you said that the, the cutting of commercials. Uh, it, it it does kind of distract from the action, but one thing that I do remember, my girlfriend, who is, I mean, I, I couldn't say with a straight face that she's into F1. She maybe just okay. sort of tolerates it because I like it. <laughs> uh, but but she showed up to, to, to Betty's that one time. She was there. And one thing that she noticed or that she told me is like, you know what, like, the there definitely was more room for conversation like if you were in the in a situation where you were what if you were watching the race with other people those commercial breaks like help to kind of like yeah, what did we just like, see what's gonna happen yeah, next yeah, what's right. what, what's happening did you see that did you see? yeah so that that was cool i mean I, <laughs> it's it's almost unfortunate that the last two races have been so exciting <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know what i mean like had yeah, it been sort sure. of last year <laughs> or uh, where like there's these races where like you know it's it's Rosberg, uh, Lewis Hamilton, Vettel in the front. You're like, and that's well, it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll <laughs> just like, like, ride this one. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, what? totally. Like, like, it's a great, great point that you make. Like with this year, I I know like it's for a fact it's been very tough to try and find those spots to jam in the commercials Absolutely. because it's the on track action has just been. <laughs> just like, there's always something going on. <laughs> so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 uh, you know. All the circumstances sort of put together, I think. Uh, I think you guys do a great job uh, in the end of it. I mean, we couldn't ask for yeah. anything. No, it's, it, honestly, like well, I'm pretty sure in this very podcast last year, I said something to the tune of TNSN. I mean, it was good, but wouldn't it be great if they had the Sky commentary? Oh yeah, I, I, I did yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happened. Yeah, yeah. Well. Oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, TSN, they're great. Wouldn't it be great if they didn't have any commercials? <laughs> oh, this time next year. Maybe, yeah, maybe this time next year. <laughs> so no. just, uh, yeah, man, like just make sure you guys, I guess, reach out, reach out to them and just thank them for for yeah. doing that because uh, they were thinking of they were thinking of you guys when they when they went and they did this deal. Ah, nice. cool. Uh, Hey, so well, make, you, make, make sure to tell them thank you from us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We'll, we'll, no, we, we will make sure to tweet that later. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, maybe the biggest topic for, first of all thanks for talking to us again i don't know how long you have to talk to us we've been talking about half an hour but qualifying like an hour we gotta talk about this quick before <laughs> before we end this yeah, more like an hour 50 minutes actually to the dog no it's all, it's, it's all <laughs> good man we can talk qualifying youtube and, says uh, 36 minutes and 38 seconds but i don't know oh my god w what do you think about this qualifying situation <laughs> What, what's first of all what do you think about how it's been what's your prediction for maybe their decision because there's so many up in the air yeah i think um and a big a big thing is if if they want to stick with this type of qualifying uh teams are going to need a, an extra set of tires yeah that's sure that, that's just that pirelli's going to have to go ahead and start making more tires for and, them because and, and, and actually that is something that pirelli said that they they actually have a deadline of yeah, when this do, can yeah. even be feasible, period, because they have to they have to make the damn things. Yeah, yeah. So before, it, before... It's, it's not like it's like making a Formula One tire. It's not like oh yeah, we'll just slap some rubber on this and away we go. <laughs> no, it's like you, there is so many different types of layers, and yeah. the tire needs to be baked properly. It's, it's almost it's almost a handmade pressure. process. It is a handmade process. Yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. exactly what it is. So it's, it's wrapped it up like, forever, like a cigar. So. Yeah. So Jay Jay did a little math here, be yeah. Before we started the show, so so he, so here's the Check thing, yeah. This is regarding this new aggregate. Well, first actually, before I even talk about this, have you ever in your in your motorsport experience been participated in, yeah, in an aggregate, aggregate qualifying? qualifying? Oh, never. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't. I I would never want. I would never want to because you know you're paid to go out there and throw it on the line and like yeah. you know balls out laps lap. like yeah, not, that's, not the that's, two that's fastest laps you listen can maybe you, you can be you can be mr consistent on sunday on race day yeah. but yeah. but saturday is all about who's the quickest guy who's and, the fastest yeah he, and here here's one thing so i did i did just like a quick analysis on the uh qualifying uh data so if they had picked the first or the the the, the, the two fastest laps 
of, of each driver and added that up the same way that they want to do next week uh, in China or whatever, or for the rest of the year, if Jean Todd gets to say, um, the, the grid would have looked completely different even at the top. So you would have had that Nico Rosberg actually would have been pole would have would have been pole position, followed by Vettel, followed by Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Like it, yeah, because Hamilton went off. Yeah, so like it's it's that different. It's not it's not a little different. It would be that different. Now I can this see this is what Bernie wants. Yeah, well, that's what Jean taught. The variability, right? But do we do we do we really need that? Because I think that the last two races have been great, despite whatever they've been trying to do with with the qualifying. It's been it's just been great racing because you know other elements have come to play. The tires, the three tires, definitely have come uh, have added that extra um, level of strategy and whatever and and unpredictability. Big time. But. The, 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 and then you have teams like Ferrari catching up. Teams are catching up. The, the action is F1 has a product that is that is a good product. Mm-hmm. I think that they're wasting way too much time in trying to figure something out that is not even the main problem with F1 right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's kind of... Yeah. It, is there a disconnect in between the people that are running the sport and, and the sport itself? I don't know if there's a. It's not. It's, it's more of a. It's more of a power play. I think uh, between you know the guys like the guys at the top like Bernie Ecclestone, Jean Todd, like, and just them just trying to figure out you know who's really in control of of Formula One. Um, I think that's kind of what is really going on here. And you know what? Like if this aggregate qualifying thing goes through, it is. It's not going to be a very good thing. It's not going to be a good thing for the sport. Um, the drivers aren't going to be happy with it. And, yeah, you know, people pay good money to show up on Saturday to see who is the fastest. Yeah. And they're not going to understand the average fan. You're trying to get the average fan on board to watch Formula One. You're not going to do it by having aggregate qualifying because no. they're not even going to know what's going on. It seems like that's what we're going to be watching, unfortunately. In China, we'll see. We'll see Thursday, right? So yeah, yeah we'll see. You never know more... what's going to happen. It is Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> Two more days of schmoozing until then to to figure it out. What, what, one of the yeah, interesting yeah. things I, I I don't know if you've had the the pleasure of reading um, the Art of War by Adam Parr. <laughs> I have heard about it, but I've never read it. I, Adam, I listened to the audio book of no 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 of of Adam Parr's. Uh, no, Adam Parr, not Shun Tzu. Oh, Shun Tzu, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, right, right. No, no. Adam Shun Adam Parr used to be the uh, like the, the 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 technical director, like the the team principal at uh, Williams way back in the day, uh, or you know, back the, way back in the day now. But he's been out of F one for like a decade or uh, right around. But anyway, he put out this this book that's called The Art of War. Um, Adam Parr, P A A R R. Um, the War of Art. <clears throat> and it's it's a graphic novel almost. So it's like a cartoon book, but it, it really actually, some of it is like really poignant. Anyway, one of the things that like he, he, he tried to convey in the book is that the way that F1 is run is that it's not just, it's not just one meeting or, or, or it's not just, a, or it's not a series of meetings. It's like being an F1 for a year, it's like being in a one year long meeting where you just meet like it sometimes like you're up till three o'clock stuck in these meeting rooms and it's always the same shit and it's always <laughs> Bernie saying something. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's kind of weird like that. And things rarely get done the way they need to be because of that, because of the archaic system. And I'm sure things like this worked in the seventies, but um, perhaps they don't now. And, 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 and we have to listen to what the drivers are saying. Like do, 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 you got to hold, I'm sure of that uh, GPDA letter that they put out. Where, where where they basically like directed it to Bernie and said, "Listen, the, the the system is broken." The thing is, the thing with that is, is you know, Bernie, uh, uh, I bet a hundred bucks Bernie's had letters sent to him from the drivers uh, before. This is the first time it's ever been made public. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you know, Bernie. I think we'll we'll look at it as drivers drive and the businessmen do the business, and that's kind of how yeah, he probably, runs yeah. runs things. Yeah. And that's how he expects things to to roll. Um, you know, you need you do need a guy like uh, a Lewis Hamilton speaking up and, and a Sebastian, you know, speaking up and speaking out because 
those two guys right now, and same with Nico Rosberg, are are the faces and the voices of the sport, yeah. uh, Formula One. And whenever people sit there and slam Lewis Hamilton, you know, you can't, you just can't do that because he is the most passionate F1 person there is out there. And he is, you know, the voice of the sport and that sport really needs him to, to keep speaking out and keep speaking his mind and, and keep doing what he's doing. Like yeah. being very active on social media and recording that mixtape. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But like still like uh, cruising around the world, spending months, just in Toronto. Yeah, like, in Toronto. Yeah, in Toronto, like just spending months he cool. here. He, 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 he loves he, our city. No, he actually really likes Toronto. He came here to train, right? Like he was here training a few days. Anyway, like, yeah, no, no, doing that. That Why not? And yeah, exactly. So that's just part of that, that, that the voice of, of F1 that you kind of need. You know, the GPA, G, GPDA is great. Alex Verts does a great job, but it needs Lewis Hamilton. It needs Sebastian Vettel and it needs Nico Rosberg. But all three of them have put like – They've said publicly that they agree with that letter. Need to keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Can't stop. Now, if they're doing it, why not us? And it's and it's something that I think that we've been harping on for a while. Like mm -hmm. we we genuinely believe that in this day and age, it's not like it used to be. They actually the, the fans, us, the fans, we have a say, and we have to have a say. And and we there are things that we can be doing out there. Uh, geez, I mean, we're we're trying to we're trying our best by putting the, the, these events together, like a Betty's or whatever. But um, I, I find that it's <clears throat> it's hard to communicate your passion for something like F1. That's so yeah. it's 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 such a high learning curve. Even even <laughs> when we started the podcast, Mike here, he had no idea about F1. So Not it was, a thing. Yeah, I knew <laughs> nothing about Formula One. It's it's been a year. Do you have it? Any? Absolutely. <laughs> I can. I now talk about F1 like I talk about hockey. Yeah. Nice. I know the players. I know who they are. I know the yes. what the state of the sport is in. Which yeah. is fantastic, and I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, but cool. but that that took some time, right? Uh, it took me a year. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm sure. I mean, you you working from the inside, Tim, like you at, at TSN, like I, I'm sure you've been in a situation before where you've had to explain to somebody, like why why do you is, like why, this? Yeah, well, why do you like why do you watch these yeah. guys? <laughs> what's what's your I answer to that? <laughs> I always get I, sometimes I always get asked. Uh, why do you do this? Not in terms of like why I work at the ascent, but why why do you why do you race? You know why do you do that? I think uh, my heart is behind the wheel. Mm. Uh, I think it's just something that's in your DNA. I really do. I don't think it's. I don't. You know, you can grow to like something, but to be very passionate about racing and taking something to the limit and being confident in yourself and, and finding out uh, finding out who you are. Um, Is, is a big part of racing, you know, because it'll it'll teach you if you're if you're a man, and it'll teach you if uh, <laughs> it will, and, and it'll teach you like you know where um, you know how brave are you? Uh, what are your? It'll teach you everything. What are your morals? What you know? Um, what do you believe in? All that kind of stuff, and and that's what I take away from from racing because it kind of gave so much of that to me. So when people come to me and say, "Hey, why do you watch this?" Or why do you compete in it? Or why are you a part of it? Is just because it's it's just in my blood. It's what I do. It's what I love. It, I can't really explain it other more than that. It's just my heart is absolutely in it, and I wouldn't know what to do uh, with myself outside of racing. I just wouldn't know what to do. I amen to that. That's Perfect awesome. answer. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of have a follow up question. Yeah. Yeah. So me starting to get into F one last yeah. year. All right. Um, so this high learning curve, like very steep. Like, you have to, you can't, and it's true, especially with Formula One. Yeah. It's like, you can't just watch a race. You're like, yeah, they're going fast, but it doesn't really mean anything. Not the sense that the speed, but, like, the players exactly. that are involved. Well, actually, I think I think that's part of, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it we, we are at a point right now where, like, you know, maybe perhaps a watcher, of uh, a viewer of, of F1 in the 70s could have gotten an idea of how fast they're going, but... The problem now is that these cars are so good at going so fast that when you watch them on TV right. and you and you don't know how fast yes. they're going, they actually like the smoother they go around, the faster they're gonna be going. But that right. looks, uh, it doesn't look doesn't as fast. Look as but uh, it's okay. So the the question essentially was, yeah. how do we? This is, might sound stupid, but how do we get <laughs> people to actually watch the sport like f who know nothing about it? 
And I think uh, there, there's no real structure or support for people trying to get into F1. It's just kind of like it exists. <laughs> it's, 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 it's either like you, you've already been in it since the dawn of time or uh, you're never going to get into it yeah. unless you have like two really good friends that know everything about it. It's a uh, dream. It's a dream. It, it is. Yeah. It was all a dream. Yeah. <laughs> that, that must be it. I think uh, it's a dream for everybody that's there for sure. You know what? I think uh, that's a good point that you make, though. It really is. I think uh, a big part of that is trying to have someone like myself around to help explain um, what's going on and trying to translate that passion into um, uh, words and just saying, like, hey, this is what's actually happening. Or there, people just see cars going around when absolutely it's, it's so far yeah. from that. Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 There's so much. <laughs> There's so much going on inside that <laughs> that cockpit of the car. Yeah. Like, you know, you're managing your tires. You're trying to be aggressive. You're braking with, you know, 500 foot pounds of, of of force into the pedal. You're doing the same with the gas pedal because gravity's trying to rip your foot off of the <laughs> gas. <laughs> steering wheel's trying to rip your arms apart. You have yeah. gravity is trying to rip the head off your shoulders. You have other guys breathing down your neck you're trying to either conserve you know fuel or conserve battery life now or conserve your tires right uh manage strategy try to stay out of trouble you know but still trying to pass people game position uh outsmart somebody finding where their weaknesses are out on the track there's just so much going mm -hmm. on inside don't, of them don't a, don't, a don't lose focus yeah yeah don't lose focus exactly yeah. as soon as you lose focus like you become you, maldonado you, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and it's it's a good point. Another point you made, like you know, you're watching, um, you know, you're watching the cars go around, and, and you say, oh, well, they do look kind of slow. But then once you see Fernando Alonso's crash, mm -hmm. and you're oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, fuck. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay, that is really, yeah. You're like, okay, that this is really fast. This like is, this, is, yeah, this is just real. keep re reminding yourself of that whenever yeah. you're like, oh, they look, they look slow, and then just remember Alonso's crash and yeah. how fast that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred ten kilometers an no, hour. No, it's even scary in slow motion. Yeah. Looks like oh yeah. Yourself. Terrifying. <laughs> I was I, absolutely, absolutely. It's was. funny. I, I when I tell people that I do a Formula One podcast, yeah. the first is what, and the second <laughs> is I didn't know you were into Formula One, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, I have two buddies that got me into it, and they're always like, I didn't even know like how to get into this sport. Yeah, and I feel like <laughs> my journey. Uh, in this podcast, my spiritual journey within this podcast is exactly that. Like, if you watched our podcast from the beginning, you would see this just growth of a hero, Frodo Baggins, leading the ring into more into Mordor, dropping. He gets a finger bitten off, but you're you good. simply do not walk into Formula One. Yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. But it's a, it, well, once you do, it is like really rewarding. It's very rewarding. But I almost yeah. feel like. Lot it's of fun, rewarding right? in the same way as tabloids to some degree. Where like there's always something going on. It's like, oh, did you hear about Bernie Ecclestone? No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you know what I mean? Like exactly. like one of these things. But also there's there's a rich history of the sport Absolutely. and the and the, and the like, one of the things about uh, seventy five years now. Yeah. <laughs> what well, this I was watching uh I forget what it was, qualifying for something. Um and my girlfriend's brother was over at my place and like he was just like he just sat down at the couch because i was doing something and drinking a beer not paying attention to him so he came to find out what i was doing and 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 he like i i think i could see that he that I, it caught his interest for for quite a while and i mean it was qualifying last year so that was the right. rapid fire action whatever so something was happening yeah, yeah right <laughs> uh, and and then he he turned around and he was like oh man like it, you, you could tell he, he just had no idea and he was like so like oh like what's going on like so there's this team that's called ferrari and then this team that's called mercedes like surely they must like the, the, do they have some sort of like do, do they have to pay anything to, to ferrari or mercedes to to use their name and i was like no man they <laughs> like all of those teams of all of ferrari yeah. and so ferrari their was full only power. started making car like the beautiful sports cars to finance the f1 operation and that's like maybe like the rich history of the sport is is it, it, it comes to play for sure, yeah, and, and absolutely. it adds to the passion. It is great. No, totally. totally. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge. I think uh, I think what you guys do, I think it's amazing. I think getting people together and going to watch the races at a place like Betty's, I think that's 
I think that's awesome. And I think there I think you guys need to keep doing what you're doing because I really do think it you know, you guys are the lifeblood of, of auto racing in oh, Canada. Thank you. And, oh, and thank you're, yeah, we hope to. It's, it's you're fun. You're kind it's of fun. like that it's that a, it's a hobby for us, that's right? gonna try and help help bring uh bring more fans along and I think it's uh it's just going to get even bigger now that we have, you know, we have three Canadian kids. I, uh, I, I, I want that to be sort of a segue yeah. to that. And like, it is now a good yeah, yeah, time yeah, good to talk story. about our boys that are out yeah. there. Okay. Um, Mr. Stroh. So I, no, I only know about, about a handful of them or a couple of them. Um, but I don't know how you are with time. But I, I, we've been actually following in the podcast since last year. Uh, Lance Stroll's advancements through uh, the uh, that thing that he did at the beginning, the, the Toyota Racing Series at the beginning of last year, which he won. Then he went to Formula 3. He, he did okay. But now he's with uh, again with Prema and more involved, and he won the first race. So he's, he's been doing great. He's a test driver for Williams. We know that he's that he's got the money. Let's, not, let's be honest. Uh, but... I have actually heard more recently more interesting and like more interesting stuff coming out about Latifi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nicholas Latifi. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's awesome, man. Like you, you guys would, uh, really, really like him. He's super down to earth. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Um, and you know, being signed to Renault is not a bad thing. So, uh, that's good for him. It's good for his career and, and what he's been able to achieve. Uh, only getting into racing when he was 14 years old. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Starting starting with go karts and then working his way um, through the ladder system. Now up in GP2, he's racing with one of the best teams in GP2. Uh, he's got a great teammate in Alex Lynn. Uh, he's been telling me. Uh, he's been learning a lot from Alex uh, this year. You know, Nicholas is really Alex, looking at Alex Lynn, um, like on his uh, what he's on his third season of GP two or something like that. So he he knows yeah, a lot. And Nick, yeah, Nicholas has been keeping pace with him in testing uh, too. Nice. It hasn't been it hasn't been like Nicholas is getting his doors blown off. It's like Nicholas is faster than him in some sectors of the track, and Nicholas is a couple tenths of a second off of uh, Lynn's faster times. Uh, there's some things that he needs to work on, obviously, and he knows that, and he needs uh, he needs to start uh, learning more about the tires mm -hmm. uh, because they play a big factor in GP2, and this is what he's learning, um, learning uh, a different type of braking style because the com the the, the basically the uh, uh, the compound that they use in the brake uh, caliper itself and the pads is different from what he was using a year ago. So it oh. just means that he can't be as aggressive on the brake pedal as he's used to. Um, but he's a talented, he's a talented guy and he's going to figure it out. Uh, is, isn't he, race, isn't he local, like from around here or something? Yeah, he's from, he's from Toronto Nice. and, uh, TSN is going to try and, uh, TSN is going to try and bring him in next week and, um, and, and get him on their show. And ho hopefully nice. that happens, you know, that, It'd be really cool if it does. Um, I think uh, you know Nicholas would be great for the for the sport in Canada and and growing it because he's just got that great personality that, that would help for for sure. Yeah, that's people, awesome. It's, yeah, it's, him, no. him and Lance Stroll both signed this yeah. year as development and testing drivers for Formula mm -hmm. One. Two Canadians mm -hmm. making sure the cars work. Are we going to have you know? Within 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 reach is is the next Canadian Formula One driver within reach in those two guys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I I think Seems I think way. by 2018 you could nice. we're, we might have two uh, two Canadians in Formula One. Two Canadians, Canadians. They're not they're all, just yeah, one. I, honestly, they're yes, already yeah, they're already in there technically. That's true. Yeah, they're racing, but they're in the. Oh, there we go. Are we? Are we here? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> that was really scary. That has. I paid a lot of money for, for this fucking thing, and it just like stopped. It's just like, See, we're, nah, we're, I'm good. We're not quite at the TSN broadcast level <laughs> yet. What are you? Are you talking about my little room here? Oh, come on, guys. We're really sorry about that, One Tim. Day. <laughs> no, don't worry about it, man. It, it happens. First, this is, uh, first, it's a first for us. <laughs> when we're out, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, uh, <laughs> do you remember the last thing you were saying? Because we like the audio cut off like right mid sentence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, just just basically talking about how uh, having two Canadians in, in Formula One by 2018 is definitely an achievable, nice, uh, achievable thing. Just simply because, like, it's it's uh, you, when you have two Canadians who are signed as you know either test and reserve drivers or just test drivers. Mm -hmm. You know that means that uh, teams are interested in in their talent. You look at Robert Wickens. You know he was the last Canadian to ever be signed to uh, a deal like this. So uh, you just it's, yeah, he, it's he's, really he's, good. He's happier at DTM now though, right? Wickens. Yeah, I was talking to I was talking to Robbie uh, last week. He's uh, going to be testing here soon. He's coming back to Canada nice. in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, going to hopefully you're going to try and get him over to TSN as well. Um, Robbie's a great guy. I really wish uh, he had gotten into Formula One. Uh, great driver, super talented, uh, and just good for the all around good for the sport. But yeah, he's tearing it up in DTM right now. Yeah, he's 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 big in Germany. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he is big in Germany. <laughs> it's like when, when a rock band gets big in Japan, he's big in Germany. <laughs> uh, yeah, Go Canada. He's Canadian. Oh, he's big in Germany. Oh, yeah, Germany. <laughs> oh, man. That's so, the, 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 the crazy world of motorsports that we just happen to be passionate about. Love it. Um, Tim. Uh, I th yeah. I'm I'm sure by this point we've taken way too much of your time. Thank you Love so me. much for coming on the show. Uh, Apologies and thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that amateur moment, uh, Don't Tim. Guess. Um, I'm sh we've we've mentioned it before, but I just wanna I just want the good people of the internet to hear it. This is not gonna be a a, 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 a one in a, in a lifetime type of thing. We can, we can expect to see you back in the show. Yeah, for sure, guys. Whenever you whenever you need me, I'll uh, I'll definitely come on and talk to you for sure. Talk racing all day long. And and for sure, let's go let's go grab a beer one of these days. Honestly, let's do <laughs> yeah, it. Man, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Come, come by to Betty's too. One of the non <laughs> non live events, perhaps. If you're not, yeah. if you're not working, if you guys, yeah, man, you guys just let me out. know, and I'll do my best to get there. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, I think uh, with that we can we can wrap it up. Uh, honestly, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you and, very much. Thanks uh, for the insight. Let's, uh, let's, the fun. let's keep fighting for the sport. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly what you got to do. And like I said, you guys do a great job of it. So just keep doing it. Uh, thanks again for having me on. I had a great time. No problem. And uh, yeah, man, stay in touch. Yeah, we will. Definitely. Okay, guys. Guaranteed. Thank Cheers. You. See you. Bye. Good afternoon. Yeah. Cheers. Wicked. Cool. That was fun. That was fucking great that was awesome yeah good old tim that Brady. felt like a very canadian conversation absolutely it did it not <laughs> yeah it did yeah. to me i'm gonna leave you guys to end the segment for a sec all right well we'll just do it. uh we will keep everybody up today when tim is coming back to join us uh, <coughs> what a guy can't can't thank him enough and can't thank uh tsn enough for the effort that they've been doing if their decision to bring sky was for the fans that is something that is laudable because it is just it's a challenge right in a country like ours where you just don't have as much of a demand for the sport as you would in let's say somewhere like to be ridiculous let's say canada is not uk canada is not germany right. canada is not italy where there's where they have like a cultivated f1 audience if anything like there. We, yeah like what we heard from tim it's declined a little bit but it's also so, grown well but and having a good quality broadcast available for the public makes a huge difference absolutely because if absolutely. It, if all we had was just the like the race like the world feed race with just just showing the race from beginning to end with no commentary on it and just commercials nobody would watch it the fact that they that they chose to have what i consider one of the like the highest like the, the highest quality broadcast which is produced by sky and or at least the highest quality english commentary um i think it's, it's gonna help a lot of people to get into the sport. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, I just had an idea of something we could do. It's, <laughs> we should just make a, a short YouTube video. It's just like how to get into Formula One. 
<laughs> and they just like it just like lay it out. Just be like, listen, it's about the racing, but it's also about like all these other people. <laughs> you just add add Tim to your Skype. Yeah, call him up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, we're going to take well, yeah. a, a little break, uh, and we'll be right back, guys. Yeah, Thank you for tuning in. Turn it off now. Fun interview. Thank you, Mr. Tim. Um, we will speak to him later. Um, let, we'll, let, we'll let you guys know. For now, though. Right now, we want to talk about the Alfa Romeos. Well, about I've actually... And the two two big things that are coming back to a, we have two comebacks. The Österreich ring <laughs> to its glory, now known known as the Red Bull ring. But now, okay, if it, let's go back to the to the, the very beginning. Oh, of, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, let's go back to the very beginning of this last race weekend, when on Thursday, and I think this the, this has to do with the. Uh, with the alphas, but, but on Thursday, uh, when they do, when they typically do, um, hang on a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, Mike, I'm gonna get you to like show a link here. Yep. They do. What are they? Okay, what do they do on Thursday? They do the conference, the press conference, the team principals press conference, yeah, team and principals. we have it, we have it right here, the picture, and. As you can see, one the of those room, seats is two of the seats are two, empty. Two of the seats are empty. Yes, exactly. And 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 it just so happens that everybody be, else looks pretty grumpy. They usually they usually are like right like the, it's the, the way that they stage it is they put the people that everybody really wants to talk about at the front. In the front, <laughs> yeah. And then like you know some supporting acts. You can see the name tag on the chair there where they're <laughs> expecting yeah. somebody to be sitting. Actually, I, I, I mean, was he could be <laughs> sitting there. No, I, I he might not show up. I I downloaded the 1080p version of of this conference. Were you able to zoom in? You, uh, yeah, you were able this, to enhance. This says enhance uh, the this photograph. says uh, M. Kaltenborn. <laughs> so she was kind of. Oh no, sorry, Hembry Kaltenborn is on the side. Yeah. Side. Yeah. So yeah. So it was it was, the the people that are missing from this picture is to the left of Claire Williams would have been uh, Paul Hembry from Pirelli, and then to the right, uh, Monisha Kaltenborn. To her right and left, respectively. Or oh, sorry, yes, right. To to her right and, but right and left. But Monisha Kaltenborn was actually missing from the entire weekend. Yeah, from the entire. She yeah. didn't show up to Bahrain. Paul Hembry had some. Okay, both of them actually like these. Uh, when you don't show up to your press commitments with the FIA, you can get in serious trouble. Uh, but. They they were they were well they were, right yeah yeah uh, they it's were both deal. excused because they had huge pressing issues. Uh, Paul Hembry obviously he had he's he, he's gonna have to try to figure out what to do and how to get like Pirelli some qualifying to, like, tires yeah to get some qualifying tires and more interesting well I mean we 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 know that but Monisha Kaltenborn her not being there says a lot because. Her, the trouble that her team is in was so is so great, so insurmountable that she couldn't be there. And it really is her team. For those that don't know, she is yeah. a co-owner yeah. of the Sauber team yeah. as well as team principal. Yeah, she she and a uh, very and, powerful woman in and Peter one. Sauber uh, basically own the team. Now, right. Sauber is a team that has been in F one for quite some time. They had they had quite a bit of success. I mean, for for a midfielder team. Way back with uh, Kubica, they had they were actually During the, the BMW days, right? They, they were, were the, they, they were, were the BMW it. works team, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know they, they, they were somewhat successful. They had they had a great future ahead of them if Kubica hadn't crashed out, et cetera, et cetera. It's a huge crash yeah. for anyone that hasn't seen it. Yeah, and and his yeah. name, like if you if you want to look it up on YouTube, it's spelled Kubica K U B C A, but it's you know, it's Polish, so it has Polish Kub- name. Kubica. Anyway, so. Uh, Yes, she's missing from this, and there's a very good reason for that, and is that her team is in big trouble. Monetarily. Why? Mon- mon- Money-wise. Can, can we look at that picture that uh, that I gave you? To? I, I'm highlighting it right now. Yeah, there you go. So they, they kind of, the camera, I don't know if you anyone noticed, but if you've been watching the F1 weekend. Everybody noticed this. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the Sauber team is sitting on the floor. Not even... Folding chairs are nothing. But as well, throughout the weekend, they're probably the only team that didn't get spoken to on TV. Like where, you know, Ted... Who were they going to talk to, man? There's how many How many dudes are here? One, two, three, four, five, Yeah, like six, eight seven, or ten of them. 
Okay, <laughs> three so, or four uh, of those guys within, don't even yeah. have the uniform on. Within this frame, exactly. Yeah. So, the, the, so yeah, the, this is just like a person from wherever. So anyway, so there's 14 people in this frame, and it, when you when you when you take a look at like a, a well-funded team or just about any other team, the garage is full, full of people and full of stuff. Where's the These stuff? guys are probably doing double duty pit stops for <laughs> both te- for yeah. both drivers. Yeah. Both yeah. drivers. Yeah, these guys are... Th- this is not somebody's th- th- mechanic team. No, this is both of them. So for anyone that's been following our show, Jay and I went to the Canadian International Auto Show. Yeah. Where Alfa Romeo... Well, but l- l- let's, let's not get into that now. Okay, so... What? But, but just one second, because w- this, this is a reality now. That, that, uh, Sauber... Is without money, like so they don't have. They, is this to, 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 to the like, new is Lotus? This, uh, really though, like, like because they don't have chairs, that that means they don't have no, money. No, but it, it's not. It's not only that they don't have chairs. They, they don't, don't have, have a somebody lot of stuff. to unfold the chairs for them. They don't have. They don't have the stuff. But <laughs> like, look, man, this is this is the okay. So this this garage is for bo- it's for both the cars, and right here they have a bunch of screens, which is where the drivers are looking, and look at how far back you got to get. Mm-hmm. To look at anything else, mm-hmm. so you you basically see from from where they're sitting here on the ground, where the car would normally be, <laughs> to all the way to the end of the other gr- garage, as there's nothing. If you, you can see on the side, they got their their tool boxes. They have tools there. They have the right stuff yeah, to fix yeah. the car. But when you look at the they other have, team, they, they have, have some have, tools. But yeah, if you look at a Mercedes, benches and areas for their team hospital. drivers' brothers to sit down and hang yeah. out, and sisters if, and family members, and and it's not because they don't want. You know the Ericsson family to come. It's not because they don't want to have better stuff to work on the car. They wouldn't yeah. be they standing on the podium. Can't afford it. Yeah. And they showed up. We've seen indications of this for a long time. They showed up this year with basically the same car same as last car, year. Yeah. Uh, the their only redeeming feature and the only reason why Ericsson was probably able to pull off those moves that he did in, in, in the last race, which he, cause he, he did a good job. Ericsson was Absolutely. mixing it out, up there with the, with, the, with, the, with the guys, and that's why, that's why they showed this picture, is because Ericsson was fighting, and they showed the reaction of the team. But it's because of the Ferrari engine. So they have a competent engine in the back, but other than that, that's pretty much their only redeeming feature. And it started last year, and it, it seems to be now that they're at a position where they're basically how Lotus were last year or Jesus maybe even worse maybe like, worse a- some analysts are saying you think those guys had lunch well that's the thing man some analysts are saying that this team might just not be there for China wow. Sauber might that, just not that soon yeah that bad because <clears throat> you gotta think one thing is one thing is they would not be actually breaking any contractual obligation with FYM because they have one one race that they can miss technically because the Concord Agreement only says that they have to participate to tw- 20, for 20 races. races. And this year's ca- calendar is 21 races, right? So they wouldn't re- – like ber- ber- basically, if they, if they don't show up to China – Bernie can't sue them, right. whether but whether Bernie would want to sue them or not. Yeah. Because what is it like? It, what's it, that going to solve? Yeah. What's what's ten yeah. percent of zero yeah. if you have no money? <laughs> like it's still zero. But he just would not be able to sue them. Number one. Uh, number two is from like China is just so far away. Yeah. Like the logistic cost. Like if if they don't show up to China, they may have like a fighting chance for the next race, which is Russia. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that's much closer to Europe, much closer right. to where they are. Yeah. Much closer to Bahrain. Much closer to Bahrain, right? Sochi, so, at least. Yeah. So anyway. It, th- th- There's th- parts of Russia further than Shanghai. Th- it's, right? Man, <laughs> it's credible that Sauber will not be there the next Grand Prix. Mm. And that's, that's, as, that's how bad the situation is for them. Yeah, it's it's not good. Now, but there's some light. Yeah. There's some light in the tunnel. <laughs> Is there? As, as I was saying, Jay, Jay and I went to the Canadian International Auto Show. We muscled our way through, and we got the the man, the head of Alfa Romeo, to speak to us for 49 seconds. Alfa Romeo, uh, in North the, America. The whole, yeah, the whole, the whole group. Well, no, in North America. America. Yeah, in North America. In North America. No, 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 not not Alpha Romeo at large, but <laughs> Alpha in North America. But no, actually, he's see, uh, you know, you know, Alpha Romeo right now, it, it's is a company that is owned 
by in, in a very complicated structure by <laughs> uh, Fiat Chrysler Fiat Chrysler Group automobile. yeah so which controls Ferrari as well yeah so Sergio Marchione controls Ferrari controls uh, they have a lot of brands including Fiat and Chrysler obviously but also uh, Ferrari they have um, in, it, it's, it's, it's a big conglomerate based out of both Italy and Detroit um they so, have been treating the Alpha brand as of re- uh, like up until recently, the Fiat Chrysler Automotives had been treating the Alpha brand as sort of a in, in Europe. Um, let's say five six years ago, even you you would basically go to a Fiat dealership and you'd have your Fiat cars and then one or two one yeah and one then one or two yeah, alphas one or two alphas that were like you could tell they were exactly the same Fiat car but with like more like fancy stuff added right there. okay so so the the Canadian at the Canadian Auto Show where they unveiled the the Julia they were they were promoting this vehicle and I, I'm sure the man that we talked to assumed he thought that we were going to talk to him about the Julia if you could play that clip we did not talk to um him. so this is uh just to put it in context this is Again, Reed Bigland. Uh, uh, Reed, that's his name. Yeah, okay. Reed Bigland. Um, he is important. He is he is one of those guys that's he's a, he's very close to Sergio Marchione. Those watching he's, those watching here, you'll you'll see. He looks like a boss. Yeah, yeah. He lo- he does look <laughs> like a boss. He does look scary, and, and he and he know he knows how to like he, 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 he he's talking to us like this. And anyway, but he's <laughs> he's a corporate guy to the bone. He's close to Sergio Marchione, you know, basically a controlling interest in, in, in this whole mess. And he runs Alpha in Canada. Let's this is it. what he told us when we asked him about. Dun, 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 dun. It's coming, guys. VLC. Pull- Hi, just uh, a quick one on uh, Alpha's return yes. to Formula One because there had been some speculation about that, and Sergio Marchione yeah. had made some comments. Is there any hope for us racing fans to see the Alpha badge in a car? You see the Alpha badge right now well, on, the the car, fer- on the Ferrari. On the Ferrari car, for we sure. got the Alpha badge on the Ferrari <laughs> car. But right now, that's about that. as close as we're going to get right now in Formula One. Is we got the Alpha badge, as you guys have correctly seen, on our for- on our Ferrari Formula One cars. But as far as is Alpha getting into Formula One? Certainly nothing to announce Russell, right now. 2017, maybe? I think we'll focus in on getting the car <laughs> launched uh, right now, and then you know we'll see what happens. But as you guys are well aware, if you're familiar with Alpha, you know certainly racing is embedded in the Alpha DNA. Yeah. And right now, let's get the Julian in market, and then we got a couple of other cars behind that. Fantastic, thank you. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so I, sorry, I just want I, I want you to like mute it and then go back like a few you know, a few frames. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, there, no, there, 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 that's a bit further out. A bit, a bit, just a bit, just a bit. There, there, that's perfect, perfect. Okay. So, was this not maybe just more than a month ago, but that's it? Yeah, about four four to six weeks. Five, about there, five weeks ago. It's very recently. This, we is, heard, this is we why heard I wanted to show this clip again. Reed Biglin, one of the head honchos at Alpha. We cornered the man and asked him, him what, what can we expect? What did he you say? Gotta, what did you get from that interview, Mike? If I, I, if, I, if, I, if I told you that F1 was going to make an F or that Alpha was going to make an F1 debut after hearing this, man, what would you say? What would you think? Uh, my my sort of take on this was that uh, there was something he knew what was going on. Of course, yes, but that's, he didn't say it, or, or no, so he couldn't say it. He wasn't allowed to say it. That's what I said to Jay. There was a break after this. We went to the have some lunch. Sat down for a minute and just talked about the morning. I was like, that guy was hiding something, man. Like, yeah. I was, I was like, Alfa Romeo as I was back watching to this, Formula One. As I was watching this, you can kind of tell uh, when people speak uh, when they're gathering information from a memory versus um, from what they've been told to say. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, they yeah. do. They, there's facial yeah. things that happen. Right. It's like from memory. It's yeah. like you see the woman. In the video, if, if just, you rewatch it to the she right, she did not want like as soon as she heard that we were talking about F one, it was like actually honestly she was, she was his media person no, who we had, we had to talk to her first. We, like, we, oh, we're not gonna ask about Formula One. Yeah, no, no, we <laughs> sort of we sort of weaseled this question in the, there. The whole Ferrari, uh, or sorry, uh, Fiat Chrysler organization, all of the booths that we went to, 
the standard answer from like their minions was as soon as we brought up the Formula One topic, it was like it was like as if we oh. had just said like thrown shit on their face. Like <laughs> they, they, wow, they were, no, they, they were like Formula One. No, 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 no. From, from these guys, from from Fiat Chrysler. Right, so, okay. which is the group that owns. So, well, uh, that just Alpha. begs the question, right? That just means that <laughs> oh, they're hiding. They something. were told to say, if anybody asks you Formula ah, One, say no. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna try to find the point where, like, as soon as you asked it, like, he was like, uh, "There's, there's a no, look." Yes, yeah, yeah. He, as soon as he, as, as soon as I said Formula One, he's like, "Oh my god!" You can see it. You can see it there quickly. His his reactions, like. Oh, he asked me about Formula One. Fuck <laughs> these guys! Ooh. It's it's, fun, it's funny too because um, be, before we interviewed him, there was this chick from Naked News. You know, you know Naked yeah, News. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, they they the news they naked. sent these <laughs> that that came and like asking like she was all like, oh my god, I wish my name was Julia. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the th- car th- is this, the is, this is the Julia. The Julia. This, this is what they're what they're. Did you just turn off the TV? I don't know how I would have done that. It's oh. the middle button. <laughs> Wait, which one? The one by the light. <laughs> oh. What? And a light bulb just burnt out in the room. What the fuck? What, what is going on, man? What's going on? This room is haunted. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. There we go. No, no, my, my computer just okay, stop, 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 stop. The sound died earlier. The TV died. The computer died. The light bulb just burnt out. I, I, it's I, gone I, dimmer. I'm not even sure if we're live right now. It's dimmer. My it's computer just turned off. Oh, yeah, your power burned nope. out. And, no, we're not. Something oh. happened. Maybe the power went out in the city? My laptop just turned itself off. No, I have power from here. No, no, we're good. Power. I'm on. I'm on, guys. Are we going? Are we, are we live? Are we still on? Have, have the good people of the internet been witnessing this breakdown? Yes. Yes, okay. They've seen it, but we're here. <laughs> My computer restarted for the third uh, time. Okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah. This is the frame that I want you to, like, t- to leave it at. Okay. So, excuse my fingers. Yeah. Terrible camera work. <laughs> um, <laughs> guys. Right there. F1 is... There is... Come on. F1 don't, is saved. Don't, don't tell me that they're not going to have a beautiful, beautiful alpha on F1. I, like, I, I long for this Repaint that day. sober. Oh, my God. So, so, so is this it? Is this like for you? Is this saying like there's definitely something going on with Sauber? Why? Why is it Sauber that? Okay, no, is the, because the, this, the opportunity of the cost of that team is so low. Yeah, this. Right. So th- this interview, obviously, like I mean, yeah. Ap- apart from what he actually said with his with his word hole, uh, <laughs> we could tell. So right, you could tell it. Like you could tell. It, I could tell. It. There's something that they're hiding, and right. they, and it, it it seemed like that all weekend that we were there. We said that a month ago too. Yeah. we're not just pulling this out of our ass. No, we, if you go back to our Canadian Auto Show show episode, yeah, <laughs> we yeah we, we said the same. We asked thing. everybody about F1. This was the uh, most suspicious answer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so he he definitely knew something, and and Marchione is a guy that so that's his one above his boss. His boss. His boss is, is Marchione, and. He he knows something. He has. He also has, and 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 this is the people that know has. about him. Has. He also has has, <laughs> but uh, the people that know about um, Marchione as a guy, and he's it's 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 really hard to actually find like somebody that like can figure out the guy because he's a he's a slippery. Smooth, he's a smooth operator, uh, as okay. they call him. It's like uh, a modern day Enzo. <laughs> yeah, um, a modern nerd day Enzo. But he, he he was a pretty pragmatic guy. He was he he, he, he he's an, uh, an accountant by trade, mm-hmm. right? So he's a, he's a numbers guy. He, he he seems the world in a very logical way. But it seems like once he like really got steeped in uh, in, in in the world of, uh, of of cars and 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 the Fiat history and the and the and the the motorsports and everything else. He he holds a passion for for Formula One, and he holds a passion for seeing the Alpha name. He actually he believes that if he brings the expression of Italian engineering, yeah, as but because that's for real though. If if you are a watcher, like if you watch um, Top Gear, the old Top Gear, Clarkson's Top Gear, what that's the one thing that they kept going on and harping on and on and on about was that. Uh, if you if you really really wear a, a motorhead, you have to have owned an Alpha because Alpha is like they give you like this particular feel that no other car does, and 
if you go like deep and way back into the history of uh, of modern Formula One and and the history of motorsports, you'll find that Enzo Ferrari started his career in motorsports racing Alfa Romeos. That the first champion of uh, of Formula One as we know it today was Nino Farina in an Alfa. In an Alfa. Second champion. We had one of the biggest the biggest names. In Formula One, the wow. first person to be a multiple world champion uh, was Juan Manuel Fangio, Fangio? in an Alpha. In an alpha. It's like, so it, so, yeah, already uh, history there. Like, yeah, Alpha Romeo, huge, huge, huge. I like it's the name, like the name itself, Alpha Romeo. Like it's, <laughs> and then and, we, and, we and, say and, it like that, but you get some fucking white guy <laughs> oh, from uh, Oh, that Kentucky. Alpha Romeo? Oh, that <laughs> Alpha Romeo. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then Enzo, his whole. <clears throat> inspiration of his life to start his own vehicle company yeah. was to beat them yeah to beat that be- was his, his deal yeah. he's like i race these cars uh, my goal i need to build a more beautiful more powerful better driving car and that, yeah. that's what he did his whole life now it continues today actually well oh, one thing that uh, when we were looking at this car the new julia it's actually like it looks like a like a like a great car. I mean, oh my god! Like if I, it was if I was in a position of uh, it looks like a car you'd go on a road you go on yeah. a road trip with two people in that car. Yeah, like this this is a that looks like a beautiful car, a fun car to like drive, a roadster yeah. or something like that. Oh my god, that's yeah. that's exactly what it is. And Danny, uh, remember? I don't know if you remember, but when we were looking at this car, we noticed this particular badge, badge here. There. It's it's a badge of a four leaf clover, like right here. If you want to point to the people's. Um, inside this white triangle, right? And and you asked me, you said like, oh, hey, like, like what the fuck? Like, I, all, all of a sudden, these what uh, is that? Yeah, the, the alphas are, are Irish or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just from cursory knowledge, I remember like, no, it's it's got something to do with with old alpha with with the, with their their previous racing endeavors. Um, it it turns out that it there there is a history behind it. Just just and really quickly, I'm just gonna derail the conversation to point that out. Um, Alfa Romeo's from the very beginning, from like back when they were uh, racing, because Alfa Romeo was racing before Formula One was a thing. We, you know, we've talked about how yeah. Grand Prix racing existed before Formula One. Right. Formula One just consolidated. Uh, there was in 1923 this uh, the Alfa Works driver Ugo Sivocci. He was the first one to put the what they call in it- in Italian they call it the quadrifoglio right <laughs> the, the to put you know the four leaf the four leaf yeah yeah, yeah. on on his on leaf. his car just as a sign of good luck he was like it, it was so the the the, oh, the four leaf clover was as much a sign of good luck in Ireland as it was in Italy yeah. back in 1920s. I, it was whenever just, I see one of them, I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck. That's some good luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back in elementary school, we like grade two, grade three, we yeah. used to crawl around at recess to yeah. see who could find oh, yeah. one in the oh, whole yeah. field. Yeah. Yeah. I found cr- one in my entire oh, life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I found one. <laughs> I, was I like, found oh, one. This is it. And nice. I lost it like the next day. I was like, yeah. Oh. I found Shit. one. I don't have it. it it's, it's funny also because... It, it 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 started with one of the with their dri- with their driver Ugo Sivocci. The thing is that Ugo Sivocci was obviously a um uh what's the thing called when you believe in like this kind of shit uh um when you, when you had like belief in the, a superstitious su- man. He was a superstitious mm-hmm. man. Uh he clearly like painted that on uh but he painted it inside a rhombus instead of a triangle. Um the next race that he raced with it, he won, and he he had a, a bit of a winning streak, like and he hadn't had a winning streak ever. He just he had it after he put he painted the quadrifoglio in it, and then oh, one fuck. for one race, he they were running out of time and he forgot, or or like no. they just they just didn't ha- get a, the chance to paint the quadrifoglio and he had a big crash. So no way! Oh so my god! Since then. Alpha, and then he eventually died, like he died. Uh, since then, Alpha, but this was obviously like before Formula One, right? Since then, Alpha put their uh, quadrifoglio inside a triangle to kind of. Some say that they lost the 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 one corner to say to to to, uh, him, to his death. Yeah, to his death. Wow. And since then, basically anything that has been of racing grade, as far as Alpha is concerned, they put that badge there. 
So, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to see the web. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. The web is... Oh, I was like, oh, fuck. There but, is something going on here. But this could also be like a lame attempt by modern car companies to revive a, a diet history the same way that Audi puts Quattro in anything that's right. four wheels. But the first thing that was... The, the first Audi Quattro was a legendary world rally car that beat everybody and every, like everything like wow. it, it won the, the rally championship like years in a row like seven years in a row something like that but anyway yeah so that's 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 the thing behind that danny i i i looked it up i figured it out <laughs> and alpha yeah for, for those who don't know again anonima lombarda fabrica automobili the lombardi <laughs> Automof- automobile manufacturing company. Lombardy, if you don't know, it's like the state where Milan is. Yeah. yeah. It's the state of right. Italy. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, they call it something different, but, you know, like it's kind of like the state or province. Lombard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, they might be coming back. They bring some luck to these guys. They won't have to sit on the floor anymore. They might have lunch at work. <laughs> oh, They might have their Jesus duties split Christ. in half, perhaps. <laughs> the... Uh, Half duty, then well, they're now doing double duty, so normal duty. Yeah, and bring some luck back to the Sauber team. This is something that I want you to show. Yeah, Mike, I just I just uh, highlighted it on the book. Uh, it's it's just uh, Grand Prix two four seven broke the story, or you know had had has something to do with the story, and they showed this, which is a rendition of what an alpha could look like. They would go with that red. Well, they would so, have to. So maybe they were, they were they were the red cars before Ferrari got to to be the red cars, oh, right? Oh <laughs> fuck! And perhaps a reason that Ferrari may have decided to go back to the red and white livery this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, to, to make to make room for the full red. Yeah, the or full red and black. Eight, maybe now, do you think Alfred's Ferrari would have done that? Like, I feel like Ferrari is like equal to pride. You know oh, what I mean? Oh yeah, it's just it's, like this it's is the whole that's red. Right. That's it's what yeah. the nation of Italy is behind you, and anybody that thinks itself of Italian or anybody that watches motorsport or has a single inkling of like passion in them. I think right. of the way Italians do everything. <laughs> yeah, it's with passion, you do it in their you hands. You do it right. Yeah. You do it. You do it the old school way. Yeah, yeah. Olives, wine, <laughs> everything they do, their their cars. That they're, they're that, cheeses, that's, that, they're that, everything. That, that, that freaking balsamic vinegar that comes but in that little bulb that, that costs 150 bucks a bottle. Like it's it's not it's, it's not it's not there because because of because of uh, if you, if you blind taste it and it tastes better. It's because of the passion that goes into it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that shit is 15 years old in a in a barrel that's way older than that. <laughs> Look at these cars. Everything yeah. that the Italians do. Yeah. That's what the Alfa Romeo. So is. yeah, Alfa also had it's, a bit after they stopped being an F1, uh, they actually had like a bit of a break where they were in an F1 and then they came back. And this is what their car looked like. Now, this more recent incursion into F1 wasn't as successful as the first one. Right. Right. Um, they were a midfielder team. Mm-hmm. They were not in any position to, to win the championship, especially because by then they were already... Um, kind of owned or like in relationship with Ferrari, right. so they were never going to be better than Ferrari. Ferrari by then had the fame in yeah. Formula One, and it still does. So today, if it goes back to something like this, now th- this is basically like just a Photoshop version of a, 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 a you know Banco do Brasil. That that's a big sponsor of Sauber right now. This right. is one of the big sponsors of Sauber. You know, so basically all the Sauber sponsorship is here, except for the car is red and it has the the Alpha badge, but. If oh, it's yeah, something yeah. like this, where they're basically like just taking the for the the Sauber team, buying it for super cheap for now, like they're basically like they, they could just and Monisha and Peter Sauber might be in on this, where they're like just <clears throat> making the team seem so cheap because it has absolutely no assets that it's gonna be just, cheap to buy. That's what they did this year. They showed up to testing with last year's car, promising an evolution this year. They didn't. Pr- they didn't specify what type of evolution. At the end of last year, we had this, the exact same thing with the Renault, right? Renault basically bled Lotus until they they were like worth nothing, where they could, yeah. th- where their their future in F one was. So it's pretty much gone. Right? Yeah, at that point, the the low buying cost was justified. Oh, if you have a shit, like yeah, you. you <laughs> What are your options? Either you're not gonna race and disappear in, into the void, 
or you're going to take this paltry amount of money. So for very, 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 very cheap in F1 terms, Sergio Marchione might actually find himself within reach of owning a second team. And if they could put Haas in fifth place, what could they do with these guys? Uh, think think about this. So <clears throat> Haas has the new Ferrari engine. Yeah. Well, so does uh, Sauber. Sauber, Sauber has is, yeah. the new Ferrari engine. Yeah. And as, as I said in the first segment of today's show, Mercedes, by their data, mm-hmm. made it public that they believe Toro Rosso, who signed an agreement to drive last year's engine, has the least powerful car <laughs> on the grid. Yeah. Ferrari has been planning this for a while. Oh yeah. Well, Otherwise, why wouldn't they have the 2015 engine too? Before they want- before they wanted to kind of in the in the plans, it was Toro Rosso. Like Toro Rosso could have been the next Alfa Romeo. It could have been. It could because yeah, but and the, 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 they're, an, they're an Italian team. Matter shits though. They, they they had a long standing relationship with Ferrari before, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That now li- looks less likely. And now, to me, it's a longer-standing mem- association with Dietrich Mateschitz. Yeah, and Sauber has a longer-standing relationship with Ferrari, yeah. so, and and there were there were in way friendlier terms. So I think that the if if I were to believe one of the two stories, whether or not Ferrari was going to bring Alpha via Toro Rosso or via Sauber, Sauber is way more credible. More, more credible. The pieces are in place. They have two drivers that are now coming to their own, really. Ericsson, Ericsson's Bahrain Grand Prix just now was like as much as demonstration. I mean, it, it wasn't a tour de force like Stoffel Van Dorn, but he could be a great number two for, yeah. for, for a good team, you know, like for Ferrari. And, and even though he doesn't bring money, like he might just be like the guy with the talent and the guy that is reliable and he's going to be there. Right. Sorry, Reed Bigland. We saw right through you. <laughs> <laughs> right through that giant chest of yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was intimidating. Did the b- buddy like works out like I don't know how I, I don't know how that he gets any time to work out. Like <laughs> he's got like one of those like you know like when you're when like the fuck you have that that, that neck the yeah, neck like, the yeah. shit the yeah. delta size yeah, delta shaped neck. <laughs> Jeez. He's a mu- muscles in a suit kind of guy. Monster. <laughs> so speaking of I guess returning things to glory and Dietrich Mateschitz. Yeah. The Erstein pictures. Oh my god. Have come out. We got we got a bunch of pictures now to show you. Starting from I don't know, the, a little a little while ago. Can we pull start start with the uh the old one. What what this track looked like when Red Bull bought it in 2011. Jeez. The track was overgrown with yeah. grass. The fences were falling down there were piles of shit everywhere look at this look at this photograph this is what part of the red bull ring the a1 ring the airstar x ring whatever you want to remember it as looked like in 2011 looks like a dumpster it doesn't even look like a track it just looks like uh some uh, a road uh in a field uh by a forest right can we look at the the two paving photographs here yeah highlight them the top two here so it, it's come out this week through, through I guess Twitter. Somebody that lives near there. This this is a repaving of one of the original chicanes of the Earth oh, Erste- the original layout Damn. of the track, the long, the long west loop of the track. It's for for those that don't know who have may, maybe have even seen the race, the Red Bull Ring race, the Austrian Grand Prix, the last two years. Mm. This is one of the shortest circuits yeah. on on the F1 circuit. Where well, F1 used championship. to be a lot longer. It used to be one of the longest. But it seems like Dietrich Mateschitz. And can, can we look at the other one too? This is from the other side of the loop, the top of the the top of the hill looking back. This used to be one of the most dynamic and longest and fastest tracks in all of F1. They're like one of the pinnacles of the F, the F1 European yeah. circuit. Now, comparable uh, yeah. to Spa. Oh yeah, no, no. Okay, the so hills. this could return it to that. He, he, here's the thing: dynamic roller coaster glory. Um, at the beginning of the year, when there wasn't much F1 on track. In the oh yeah, the, no, the setting it's couldn't be more beautiful. beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, but but and it, 
this also like you got to think that austria is like quite an elevated country so yeah it the that's going to come with its own uh, particular set of uh of requirements but anyway you see right now uh this the like the big track and like us talking about it and whatever remember at the very beginning of the year when i kept talking about the uh motorsport magazine uh podcast with like like the motorsport magazine not not motorsport.com but motorsport magazine they have a podcast yeah. Yeah. and they they they've been doing a good job with it like they they are motorsport magazine has um very senior journalists so like guys that have been around forever ve- yeah for a very very since long the time dawn of time since the dawn of f1 at least <laughs> <laughs> um and it, it, they, they had this couple of like really interesting uh, podcasts with um um pat simmons from uh from williams and they talked about a, a bunch of shit but one of the things that they talked about one uh, one of those podcasts recently uh was among themselves what kind of tracks would they like to see like come back or like what like what, what you know what, what what kind of tracks would they like to see racing again and i think that the the the, the question was mostly directed as at like recent tracks like turkey or whatever like which which recent track you'd like to but one one of the most senior guys in f1 journalist yeah. uh his name is mark hughes he is like the editor of motorsport magazine like the main guy from motorsport magazine he said you know what i know that we're talking about like recent tracks or whatever but if i had my way i'd bring be- i'd bring back the old Osterag ring this, yeah. like this one he said he's like because it was it was this track it allowed for a lot of action it just the undulation he said just about everything to do with this track the only thing close is spa yeah the only thing close and to any hills at all to any elevation changes and you see and you see like for some reason like this this may seem like a very like a simple set set, setup for a track especially compared to like freaking circuit of the americas with the s's and everything else going on but just the way that this track flows a lot really allows for um for an f1 car to really like reach its top performance yeah, when you you go up and down those hills you feel the the pole left to right yeah go, go back to the, the other picture you just had the if you, if you compare this this is how it used to look Back in the 70s, 80s, no development around. There's nothing around there. There's a few houses, a few farms, a l- tiny little village in the top right. If you go to the uh, the other picture <laughs> on the left, you can see here how it's being built up. And uh, if you if you pull up the uh, the overlay that I highlighted too, from the uh, the show the showbook page, the overlay compared to this, what they're racing on now is, as I said, one of the shortest tracks in the circuit. And uh, so here you can see, if you click view image, the oh, <laughs> Whoa. oh! what close this shit right close away. That, close yeah. that now. So yeah, if you, if you see here, yeah. anyone that's for the watchers, the red line there, yeah. Yeah, the red line is where we are racing on now. This is what's known as the Red Bull Ring, mm. which is very short. It's the maybe shortest or second shortest. This is the one that used to look like a well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? They, they go the other way. They go clockwise. But that is what is known right now as the Red Bull Ring. And mm-hmm. the gray line, the gray line around the outside That's what the, was known be. as the Österreich Ring, the mm-hmm. Austrian Ring. Mm-hmm. Österreich. That's how I say it. From uh, Austria in German. 1977 to 1995. From yeah. Through the 70s, yeah. yeah. They, they raced that track from 1970 to 1995. That's right. No, no, no. 1977. Go back. Go down. Go down. Go down. You'll see. Go down. 70. No, go down. Go down. This was 1977. 77. Yeah, this arrangement. This, this, arrangement. this one that they were. They were back. okay for they, the first seven years. They made did maybe a, perhaps a more slightly no, dangerous just, arrangement was, without that chicane. Yeah, because it was too fast. Yeah, it was a bit too fast. Then after from 96 to 04 was known as the A1 ring. And they then, only raised it there like a handful of years. Right, and then so Red Bull bought the entire property. We showed you that picture at the start with the trees growing growing through the fences yeah. all run down they bought it in 2011 and f1 has been back there the last two years now yeah last year was their second race good 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 circuit it, it, it <coughs> the races there proved to be okay but um they may have been okay races despite the circuit mm. it's, it's <laughs> a short track with a lot of laps but yeah. there's a lot of elevation change a lot of up and down something interesting 
been talking about Moto GP. Yeah. This year, 2016, it's this track is being added to the calendar. But look, man, these pictures are telling because this, like you're saying, that's the chicane, man. They're they're that not they're the looking chicane. to build. Like, if oh, why yeah. would they, why that, would that, they put that grandstands there? here yeah. if they weren't gonna race? It's gonna here. be used. You see that all that pavement yeah. to the right, which used to be grass and trees, it's been paved over. That is going to get a grade one certification yeah, from the FIA. And we will see racing around the original Uzer actually. Why not? Wow. Fucking let's bring it back. <laughs> cool. This right. was one of the ultimate, like, this track only disappeared of the calendar for reasons that they want to get rid of spot now. Just purely mm. commercial things because it's hard to get to. And honestly, it, in, in the in the flyover, you know how, like, um, during the F1 races sometimes, like, in the, in the prelude to it. Luckily, they do, Mr. Madishitz has money. Yeah, he, he's got he an unlimited He can pay for time. all those tickets of people that don't show up. Oh, yeah. Up. <laughs> but, but you, you know, in, like, the big like, that. airplane or, like, or, or uh, helicopter sh- uh, shots of the city or whatever yeah. of where yeah. the particular event, event is happening in F1, they usually, like, zoom into the city or, like, show what's around. When they do that for Austria... It's just like fields and fields with like cattle in it. Like like no, you see cattle grazing. See from this photo and from the other photo, as far as you can see is fields. And if yeah. you, you see the other picture from the seventies. Yeah. At the same time this made it well, Red Bull held their air racing competition championship no, man. race was here because, so of, because it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. Listen, so it's not a glamorous location, but that ought to it's not matter beautiful. with hum, like the the quality of the racing that is gonna happen there. Is gonna make the, the the trip out there worth it, one hundred percent. And the beauty of the surroundings. Yeah, you go out there, you go the skiing. Fresh mountain air. Yeah, yeah buddy. Like this uh, is gonna be great. Like I, I am actually uh, very excited if they actually like do this and bring this circuit back because this is gonna be an all time great. So wait, are they saying this green line? The green is, line is the new one. Is what they're working on right that now. That was the original. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right now they're they're racing on this. Uh okay. The small the small yeah. wheel. Yeah. Yeah. The small wheel. (laughs) Small wheel. This is the the big wheel with the weird tail. (laughs) It's yeah. Now, does that not say to you, like it's pretty much like proof that DJ's match says like it's if if he says that he's gonna pull out of F one sometime soon like this. Come on. He's not yeah, doing. He's, he's not, not pulling out of Formula God. One anytime soon. Here, here, liar and a sinner. <laughs> he's gonna try to get a new Ferrari engine for Toro Rosso. Yeah. He's gonna push that tag Heuer till they all blow up and, and two, they have two Dannys on the on the on the on the podium. Yeah, yeah. And what could I do except celebrate with a beer? <laughs> <laughs> two Dannys on the podium. Danny Rick. How many how many Javiers have been up there? Never. How many mics? <laughs> Maybe one or two mics. Hawthorne was one. <laughs> oh, there's, been, there's been a few mics on the top step of the F1 podium. <laughs> uh, powerful Danny and F1. Michael Schumacher? Yeah. He- <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Guys, no. come on. I thought, I thought <laughs> you would have had that. Yeah. You, were, I, you weren't supposed to realize. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate for you, I pay attention. I was trying to take all the glory <laughs> of my name. <laughs> No, it, it's, it's all it's mics in the world actually know each other. You just oh, don't know oh shit, man! Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, seriously, no. Good, good, good for them. Good strategy. Like you yeah, know, pave in, that shit. Pave the forest. Let's race there. F one is a world right now where like everything is just so backwards and going in the complete opposite direction of where the fans wanted to go. To find such a like such a move of like you know maybe somebody out there is actually wanting to do something that's gonna be great for the sport and great for the fans. That's refreshing for sure. Costing them lots of money and not Yo, caring, not that giving guy, a yeah, shit. Just, just, just yes. silence. That guy, yes. he's got it. He's a guy. He's, he he not, decided nothing but encouragement. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Mister Dietrich Matisic, listen to us. Do it. Do Make it. this happen. Please. Do I'll, it. Buy, I'll drink a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> and check this out. Probably, I guess the final topic of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've talked about restoring glory. Let's yeah. talk about uh, finding glory, I guess. Bringing glory from, from nothing. <laughs> Azerbaijan Baku circuit. Oh, God. They're, they're paving over their hundreds of years old cobblestone around the old... UNESCO sanctioned host historical city, mm-hmm. the walled city, the maiden's tower of Azerbaijan. 
Starting wars. <laughs> Azerbaijan is at war. Azerbaijan. He's uh, it's okay. So with Armenia. Azerbaijan it's it's easy to overlook Azerbaijan in a in a world map. And and, and not a lot of people like really hear about a Armenia. A lot of the F one fans are pissed off. Well, I say let's. I, mean, I say let's bah. race where we can race. Like, these guys want to race. Let's fucking race there. They're building a badass track. This is, by all all accounts, the Bad. quickest, fastest street based circuit ever being built in any city of the earth, in all times. Listen, okay, yeah, it, it, there is the argument that sport should be separated and divided and removed from politics. From politics, one hundred percent. I I am mm-hmm. I am really behind that because. But it's, we're talking about F1. They're, they're, they're two different things. Exactly. But <laughs> then we're talking about F1. And then what is F1 if not just pure politics? politics. As, as long yeah. it's it's uh, – who is it that said this? Uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, Frank Williams. He said F1 is politics six days a week and then you race. And then you race on <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, you race on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> you hit the gas. Yeah. Uh, but you know, this is something serious. So it, it, for all those that you that you might or might not know, so uh, Azerbaijan is a very, 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 very tiny country, and and so is Armenia. But uh, they were they have a long history. That part of the world where they where they're at, it, there's a long history of violence, a long history of sectarian disputes, centuries old traditions, and and people that have a have. A, they, they're very ethnically different, even though they're so close. Um, they've always so their their border, the countries as they stand now, they've they've had this long-standing claim for this border region, and it was sort of like there there was a nod before that, like okay, you know what, like we can't agree on who actually owns this yeah. meter of land versus the other person, but we're gonna leave it alone. And as of recently, as of last week, basically. There's been, there's been some shit going on down there, and Uh-oh. this is serious. Fighting has resumed. Now, this part of the country of Azerbaijan is basically as far removed as you can be from Baku, from where the race is gonna be. But the situation still stands that by the time that F1 gets there, in uh, like soon, like soon, like after, like like right around the time. The week that, after like, Canada. Yeah, the week after Canada. Two weeks after so, Monaco. We're we're talking about in a couple months, this country could be involved in full blown war. <laughs> the the last time fighting erupted, they lasted for six years and thousands of people died. The the Jesus. area, it's, it's sort of like when you look at the the world map between Azerbaijan and Armenia, there's a dotted line of a disputed area that's yeah not really controlled by either country. No. They just it's, both they, they both agreed that they were gonna gonna kind of gonna leave it alone. It and used to be called an uh, yeah. classified as an an autonomous oblast <laughs> region. Now it's known as the Nagorno Karabakh Republic. Keep going, zoom in. Yeah. So it's like somewhere in here. Yeah, kind of where your mouse is to the right. That yeah, that whole area there. Yeah, and right up around. Zuluf Kuari Lashin. That's where the fightings happened. It's no. It's known as the Nagorno Karabakh Republic. Yeah. Covers about um, forty four hundred square miles. It's a huge area. Jeez. Not really sure why they're fighting over it. To be honest, it's to poke the bear, man. Because uh, yeah, the the, the, Az- the Azeris are friends with the Russians. That's ours. And it Ar- used to be ours. Yeah, uh, the, the, Azer- the Azeris are friendly with the Russians and the Armenians are friendly with the Americans. That's <laughs> it's proxy wars, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, but you see where Baku is. Baku is as far removed as again. Baku has a nice... Uh, buffer? A, a nice buffer. They have a nice <laughs> bay that's so it's, uh, protected from the ocean torrents and from from everything. It's beautiful there. Nice weather. Lots of money. Beautiful sailing. Oil. Nice fishing. So, yeah, oil beautiful hotels amazing racing I, well hopefully i mean jesus christ we, we, don't, we, don't, we, we haven't we haven't seen it race there but i think i'm i i'm still excited like you are it must be the, said though since, since a few days ago 30 people have died in conflict 18 18 armenians armenians and 12 azeris 
Some helicopters and drones were shot down. Yeah, it's gonna be thirty people died. <clears throat> let's let's we'll, we're gonna keep an eye on that. But if if they have to drop the Baku Grand Prix, it would be a shame for us fans. But I guess uh, it's it's important that everybody stays safe. I suppose. What's sort of the I want to see the, the race, protocol but... of like a canceled race to that sort of a degree. There I... hasn't been many cancellations of races because now everything is so commercialized that to break one of those contracts, like. Yeah, it's it, like they'll go, they'll go right. It, it, it would have like the you the, know what would be the, the most conflict, ironic thing. The conflict would have to be like maybe here for them yeah. to even consider shutting the race down. Right. I, I posted this on Reddit just as an open query to anyone: Has there ever been a Grand Prix held in a country at war on its own soil? Mm-hmm. Obviously, America's at war, Britain's oh, at America, war, and right. NATO countries are countries are at war all the time. But on, on its, its own, own soil. soil at war, I don't think it's ever happened. It, this could be a first. I do, but it could be a first for Formula One to solve world conflict, though. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. I uh-huh. want to see this race, but I'd rather see the race dropped than bombs and shit like that. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I want you to die. Yeah. Not even the drivers. No. What? <laughs> well, oh I'm bad. if you ask that to Bernie Eccleston, though. Uh, like, <laughs> what, 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 what are they what, what is, uh, wind sacks? What is <laughs> <laughs> We're just reporting the news, though, from the internet. Yeah. yeah that's what just we just care do. about the racing. I'm sure they can work it out. If I have to, like, if I have to go with one less race this year, I'd be sad. But I get over it. 100. I still want to see a race in Baku, though, just because. Yeah, of course. It looks doing. awesome. I've yeah. been following this one closely. Yeah. Mm. It's a new yes. Say it's what it's you new. will. It looks it. powerful. It looks fun. It looks the look badass track, big hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic city. We oh, will boy. definitely keep you guys oh. up to date of what's going on with the with the with this situation in Baku. Even if nobody else is. <laughs> 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 All right, and if you if you made it to this point of the show, you are an absolute trooper. Congratulations. Yes. We love you. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Press the thumbs up. Hit, uh, hit Hit, hit subscribe. Enter the contest. Yes. Con- What's the contest again? Send Real us quick. your entry. Uh, create a piece of art yes. about the Canadian Grand Prix. I got it right this time. And you get, and you might get entry an entry to the Canadian Grand Prix. We were, we're basically giving away two tickets, two full weekend passes, general admission for the Canadian Grand Prix. Just send us in any way you want. You can email us at contest at Flat of Fever. You can uh, tweet us. You can uh, contact us on Reddit. We are Flat of Fever on Reddit. Uh, contact us in any way you want. Just get your contest entries. You will. You might be able to win this. And uh, you are good to send your entries out till the end of this month. Uh, other than that, we're going to have the next uh, Grand Prix at Betty's. Most, more details about that on our website. And we will, of course... Uh, Bring it up again on our next show. Chinese Grand Prix won't be live because we're in Toronto. <laughs> but we'll, we'll show it as, as early as possible that weekend, that afternoon. Yeah, I, actually, it's going to be for about 2, two o'clock, two, from 2 to 6. No, we, we'll be back next week anyways with the the, uh, the uh, China preview, Shanghai preview. preview uh, show. And for now, it is... Uh, that, that was Flat Out Fever. To the loop for now. Mike. Flatofever.com, Twitter, Reddit, show up Flatofever. Oh, and, and listen to Babu.com if you like this song. Bro. Their new video is coming out on Exclaim Magazine. They're gonna uh, they're gonna break it to the public. I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not. It's fine. All right. I'm glad you did. <laughs> and thanks again, TSN, Tim Haraney, for talking to us today. See you next week.